our vision a reality. So good afternoon all. Um, I would like to check before we start the webinar. I would like to check all the invited speakers that are already here. So maybe we could start from uh, Dr. Ed Hendrian. Are you already here? Men. Okay, thank you, sir. And next we are going to uh, check on the other invited speakers, Dr. Paul E. Rose. Present, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I think uh, we, are, we are ready to start a webinar. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. The Honorable Secretary General of Waipro, Vice President of G3, Dr. Paul E. Gross, the Honorable Chairman of National Research and Innovation Agency, who is represented by Deputy Chairman for Utilization of Research and Innovation, BRIM, Dr. El Hendrian, Director for Utilization of Research and Innovation by Industries, BRIN, Dr. Mulyadi Sinong Harjono. And all the respected speakers, researchers, and delegates from Waitro and BRIN, and other research and technology institutions, academic institutions, and private sector or industries. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. First of all, let us express our gratitude to the Almighty God who showers us with great health, abundant happiness and blessings. We also express our warm welcomes to all participants, especially all the invited speakers that coming from different uh, countries and backgrounds who have gathered with us through Zoom meeting, as well as the other participants either from Brind or other institutions to attend Waitro SDG2 Workgroup Webinar, Harvesting Global Solutions, Uniting for Zero Hunger Research Collaboration and Funding Opportunities, today on 14th of December, 2023. Distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, before moving to the core of the meeting, let us hear the national anthem of Indonesia titled Indonesia Raya. Ladies and gentlemen, let's continue with the welcoming speech that will be delivered by Secretary General of Waitro, Vice President of G3, Dr. Paul E. Burroughs. To Dr. Paul, the time is yours. Thank you. 
me just share some slides. I'm on the wrong side. Okay. Can you actually see that in presentation mode? Can you just confirm that that's working okay? Yes, we can see your presentation, sir. Great. Well, first of all, let me congratulate Bryn on organizing this webinar. The agenda looks very impressive, and particularly uh, Ms. Theresia, who's uh, not just an employee of Bryn, but is also the regional representative for the Asia-Pacific region in the Waitro Global Innovation Family. So I'll spend a few minutes giving you an introduction to what Waitro is and why I think this subject is important and why working groups are important. So hopefully my slide now changed. If it didn't change, somebody stick their hand up and, and tell me, because sometimes I get halfway through my presentation and we're still on slide one and nobody knows. But hopefully you're now seeing the Global Innovation Family, which is our nickname for Waitro. And it is an independent nonprofit organization. We were founded by UNIDO, that's the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, in 1970. It's been continuously operating since. So Waitro is now 53 years old, almost as old as me. And we now have more than 160 members in over 65 countries, so truly global representation. The unique aspect of Waitro, which is different from other United Nations organizations, is that our members are organizations, just like Bryn, just like my organization, Jitri. And the significance of this is that it gives us very strong local and regional engagement. Most of the United Nations ecosystem is based on countries joining the United Nations. But unfortunately, and we're all too well aware of this in the modern times, countries find many different reasons to disagree with one another. So it's very difficult to make progress. When you go to organizations, on the other hand, particularly research organizations, you tend to mostly find people who just want to work together to solve problems. And that's very much at the heart of Waitro's culture and what Waitro is. The full members of Waitro are research and technology organizations like Bryn, like Jitri. We call them RTOs. These are organizations whose business is research. But we also introduced a new capacity a new category, I'm sorry, for membership three years ago now, which we call associate membership. And that is targeted at for-profit industry that's interested in cross-border research. So those organizations, their business is actually making things and making profit, but they need uh, international partnerships in order to accomplish their goals. What this gives us in Waitro is, as I said, very strong local engagement. Each of Waitro's members it very well understands the problems in their local environments, but Waitro itself spans continents, spans the, the global uh, scope of research. Uh, this was particularly highlighted. The benefit for this was highlighted in the Global Sustainable Development Report, which came out this year. We were at the midpoint of the of the SDRs of the um, SDGs. Sorry, the Sustainable development goals for the United Nations. They were started in 2015 with a goal of 2030. And here we are at the halfway point. And the sustainable development report, a lot of it made rather depressing reading because not only have we failed to make progress on many of the SDGs, but over the last two, three years, we've actually gone backwards. We all know the reasons for this. The COVID pandemic had enormous impact around the world. Global conflict has also limited our progress. But the positive part of the Sustainable Development Report was that they said in order to get the SDGs back on track, in order to hit the goals by 2030, we need science and technology. And they particularly highlighted the importance of what they call socially robust science, which means science with local and regional buy-in and local support. Waitro is particularly well set to influence and to propagate that philosophy through its local solutions from its RTOs and its global impact through the secretariat. So local to global and the global innovation family are two principal characteristics of Waitro. We have a mission statement. 
It's simply to foster innovation on a global scale and drive sustainable development. And I won't read it to you, but there are two key words that I like to emphasize in our mission statement by empowering member organizations and facilitating collaboration. The empowerment comes from our capacity development program and indeed uh, events like this, where we help to bring our members up to a common level of capacity. We help them be the best research organizations that they can possibly be. Now, facilitating collaboration, we do that when Net Waitro works in its best possible mode as a network, a network that spans countries, brings people together in partnerships to perform research to advance the sustainable development goals. If you look at the Waitro ecosystem, I briefly described to you that we have our full members, which are research organizations. We have our associate members, which are industry. And the reason for bringing those together in the same organization, this was a major change to the Waitro constitution in 2020, is that we can bring those together to make teams. The associate members bring the needs for research. The full members bring the capacity. Together, we can make teams to solve problems. The hope is, of course, to involve the investment community and to fund projects to create impact to truly advance the state of the sustainable development goals around the world. One of those networking, one of those networking tools that Waitro has developed is called SIRA, S-A-I-R-A, -A, and it's an open innovation hub for sustainable development. You can find it at the website down in the bottom right. Syra.eco. That's the important thing to remember. It's not a .com or a .org. It's a .eco. And Syra is Waitrose matchmaking platform. It's almost like a dating agency for solving the SDGs. You can go to Waitro, you can register for free, and you can post a challenge, and you can form a team to solve that challenge. It's not a place to go to look for funding but it's a place to go to form a project team that would then be very well positioned to go to get funding. And we will help you with that. Uh, it says on the slide, we have over 800 users. We in fact have well over a thousand now. I'm sorry, the slide is a little out of date. So if you post your challenge on Waitro, it will immediately go to the Waitro ecosystem of over a thousand users from around the world. And you can look for partners on that system. As we like to say, finding the right partner isn't easy using Syra is. And if your particular organization wants to schedule a demonstration from the Waitrose Secretariat on how to use Syra or a regional demonstration, we're more than happy to set those up. This was developed out of the Germany office of the Waitrose Secretariat. Uh, Mr. Dominic Reinitz was the inventor of Syra, and he's still a major player in the Waitrose Secretariat. So please use it. Go check Syra, learn about it, find it on the web and follow us. The other impact that Waitro delivers is quite various. Uh, we have our flagship event every two years, the Waitro Summit. The last one was in 2022 in Cape Town. And many of you that are on this call, I'm sure I saw in Cape Town in 22. The next Waitro Summit is scheduled on a two-year schedule, of course, for late 2024. We have a date in November 24. And the location, we're very happy to say, will be Nanjing, China. And you're all very courteously invited to join the Waitro Summit. And please watch your social media feeds as we develop the concept for that summit. And I hope, in fact, that SDG2 will play a major role in that. We have various other events, such as diversity in international research, how to apply for funding, such as Horizon Europe is a major program that we like to put people together to apply for. I mentioned capacity development, and we have training events in advanced proposal writing, how to sell your ideas in entrepreneurship, how to pitch uh, an idea to a funding agency or an investor. And indeed, we had a whole series online that we called Entrepreneurship in Research Organizations just back in November, uh, which looked at how our member organizations can help their employees function in a more entrepreneurial way and why that is a benefit for research and innovation. And we have working groups. And one of the working groups is led from Bryn and it is the organizer of this workshop. And we set up working groups for two reasons. First is an enabling function. 
Uh, each Waitrose working group is focused on a particular sustainable development goal. So right now we have active groups in SDG 2, this one, uh, SDG 6, which is water resources, and SDG 7, which is energy. To enable members to come together in a particular forum where they can talk about the issues that are pertinent and important to that particular sustainable development goal. But a broader uh, reason for starting the working groups is to create advocacy. In the Secretariat, particularly as Secretary General, I get many opportunities to speak at national and international events about what are the issues facing our member organization. And I want to be able to advocate for what our Waitro members really need, not in terms of funding, in terms of facilities, in terms of infrastructure, but in order to do that advocacy, I need to hear from the members what is it that they need to advance the particular SDG that they're interested in. So the working groups, I hope, will bring that information up to the Secretariat so that we can properly advocate for our members' interests in both national and international events. Why SDG2 in particular? Well, I went on the United Nations website and actually looked for some statistics. And it's quite amazing how important and how critical SDG2 is. You don't realize many times that in 2022, this is just last year, around the world, 735 million people found themselves in a state of chronic hunger. They do not have enough food. That's almost 10% of the world's population. If you look at what they call moderate to severe food insecurity, that's 2.4 billion people. And that classification encompasses people who just don't have enough access to sufficient nourishment. Excuse me. <laughs> I apologize for my voice. Unfortunately, I've caught the latest winter cold. But don't worry, I have the latest antivirus software installed on my computer, so you're not going to catch it. That's carrying on. The world is actually back at hunger levels that haven't been seen since 2005. SDG 2 is, in fact, one of the SDGs where we've gone backwards over the last few years. And food prices, of course, are higher in many countries than in recent times, and this is an issue. We know why. Uh, conflict, climate shocks, the global pandemic, declining food production as a result of those have all contributed to this scarcity. But hunger and malnutrition, in fact, are a barrier to sustainable development overall. It creates a trap that is very difficult for people to escape from, and in fact limits our progress on all the other sustainable development goals. So this particular SDG is critically important, and I'm very happy to see an organization of the quality of Bryn taking the leadership in developing this working group. In fact, if you look at the SDGs, now I know this is a terrible slide and everybody's going like this. I hope he's not gonna read all this and rest assured, I'm not gonna read it all. But this is just to indicate that often we say SDG 2, zero hunger, and then we move on. But if you actually go and look at the United Nations SDGs, there are a lot of individual targets for each SDG. And this is just the list of the specific targets that have been set for SDG 2. You can find this, you can do a Google search for SDG2 and it'll take you right to the UN website. So I don't need to read it for you. I did just want to highlight one of them, target 2.3, which is by 2030 to double the agricultural productivity of small scale food producers, particular emphasis on women and indigenous peoples. And I find this quite interesting. In fact, we had a workshop recently uh, from the Waitrose Secretariat that was focused on what we called new ideas for agriculture. And the specific focus was the impact of indigenous and local, local knowledge on the SDGs. We wrote a report about this workshop and you can find it on the Waitrose website. If you can't find the Waitrose website, come see me and I'll direct you to the Waitrose website. But very interesting because in fact, when you look at indigenous technology, you find technology that in fact has a history of hundreds or maybe thousands of years, and it's been developed to respond to local problems. And our much vaunted Western science, science and technology is just in many ways starting to catch up with that traditional indigenous technology. We often have the misperception that developing countries need 
most of all, our innovation from the West. We try to create innovation to help them solve their problems. In fact, there is innovation in local and indigenous societies in abundance. They have been innovating for millennia, specifically to solve the problems that they face of not having connection to the energy grid, of not having access to clean water, of not having sufficient food supply. And one way that I think Waitro can serve the world is to take that innovation and properly protect it, of course, so that the local indigenous society keeps the ownership of it, but to take that innovation and apply it to global problems. And that's really what I mean by those four words that are becoming Waitro's new slogan, local solutions and global impact. So please go check out the report. Uh, there's also a little write-up from it on LinkedIn and on the Waitro website, and you can find that freely available uh, for download. So they gave me a short time, and I know people have some really significant research to talk about, so I don't want to run over my time. Uh, this is a map, believe it or not. It doesn't look like a map because I don't like to put the borders of countries on my maps, because for us in the Waitro Global Innovation family, it's irrelevant. But these are all the Waitro full and associate members. And you can see here the Asia Pacific region of which Bryn is a leader and Jitri is the home of the Secretariat. The bottom right corner there is some of our members in Australia. We have Latin America and South America and the Caribbean and many members there. We have Sub-Saharan Africa, where we have, I believe, 26 full Waitro members in that region. The Middle East and North Africa, and I hope these are all represented at this workshop. We have Europe, and the one region where we have relatively few members is North America, but we're working on that. We have now three associate members on the North American continent, and we're hoping to bring in our first Waitro full members very soon. So these are just a few links that you can use and capture this screen, although I've already sent this presentation to Theresia and it's freely available. If you want to follow Waitro, please go to the Waitro website, waitro.org. Please follow us on particularly LinkedIn, where we go under just the name Waitro, or you can email me directly. My email address is there on the right-hand side. And I particularly encourage you again to check out Syra if you have a challenge or if you have a research project that isn't quite complete and you want to find a partner, go to syra.eco and help Waitro enable local solutions with global impact. So again, I thank Bryn for organizing this. I wish you all the very best of success in having a productive workshop here. And thank you very much for letting me introduce it. Thank you. Thank you to Dr. Paul, who has introduced Whitero and elaborated how this working group could be or could make such a positive impact in tackling issues on food and agriculture. So, distinguished participants, followed by the second agenda, I'll invite Deputy Chairman for Utilization of Research and Innovation, Brin, Dr. El Hendrian, as the representatives of Chairman Brin, to have the opening remarks. To Dr. Hendrian, the floor is yours. Terima kasih, Mas Alves. Honorable Secretary General of Waitro, Vice President of GITRI, Dr. Paul Ebrows, all distinguished speakers, print official, distinguished guests and participants, warm welcome for all of you. First of all, we would like to apologize that the chairman of the National Research and Innovation Agency of the Republic of Indonesia, Dr. Laksana Trihandoko, who was uh, initially scheduled to open this uh, webinar, but uh, due to some reason was unable to join us. He then assigned me as the deputy chairman for utilization of research and innovation brain to deliver the opening remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, in a high spirit of collaboration, we would like to convey our gratitude to Waitro for allowing Brin to lead the SDG2 Zero Hunger Work Group, as well as organizing this uh, webinar event. As a member of Waitro, National Research and Innovation Agency of the Republic of Indonesia, which in Indonesian is also known as Brin, stand for Badan Research 
dan inovasi nasional are committed to play a more strategic role and establish robust and uh, productive collaboration with waiter members from various countries in Asia and the Pacific, Africa, the Middle East and North Africa, Europe, and Latin America and Caribbean. We also would like to use this great opportunity to invite partners and offer several programs, including co-funding schemes and research mobility, which can be benefited by other parties, both waiter members or non-members country. We believe it can also be perfectly matched with and support waiter's mission, which is to foster innovation on global scale and drive sustainable development by empowering member organization and facilitating collaboration across border and boundaries. Ladies and gentlemen, BRIN has 12 research organizations that oversee nearly 86 research centers, which a very broad research field, one of which is Research Organization for Agriculture and Food that uh, I think has strong relevance to the issue of SDG2. And thanks to Dr. Puji Lestari, the chairman of Research Organization for Agriculture and Food, who has now joined us in this webinar. We are more than happy to establish uh, research collaboration with various, with various partners, including to support the achievement of the SDG2 agenda. The primary objective of the Way Through SDG2 workshop webinar is to develop, coordinate, and monitor action that will accelerate progress toward achieving SDG2. Besides, it's also aimed at pulling expertise, information, exchange, uh, joint research and development, advocating for research and innovation, technology transfer, and public-private partnership. We believe that this webinar is also a very good opportunity to establish the network and initiate collaboration among workshop members. And I hope there will be a, a strong follow-up either through the next webinar or other events to strengthen this workshop, uh, sorry, this work group, so that what we do is uh, quite impactful, especially in eliminating hunger, improving food security, and promoting sustainable agriculture, which has become a global issue. And finally, herewith, I, on behalf of uh, Brin, officially open the Waitro SDG2 workshop webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you to Dr. Hendrian, who has expressed the appreciation of facilitating this work group webinar and shown full support to have kickstart collaborations among the researchers concerning on hunger issues. Next, uh, before stepping into the next agenda, I will invite Dr. Hendrian and Dr. Paul, as well as the invited speakers and all participants to have a photo session. So I kindly remind to activate uh, your video so our, our gorgeous smiles can be documented together. So please, the committee be prepared to take the picture. So uh, once again, I remind to all the participants to activate your video because we are going to take a photo session. Okay, so I will help counting. Uh, three, two, one. Okay, I think uh, the committee is already taking the picture. So thank you for having the photo session. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now we have reached at the core of the agenda. We'll be having three sections of presentation and discussions. And in the first two sections, I will be assisted by a moderator that will lead the discussion. The moderator is Dr. Ahmad Saripuddin as the head of Research Center for Appropriate Technology, BRIN. Without further ado, uh, please, Dr. Ahmad, you may have the time now. Thank you, uh, Pak Alfis. Ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon. My peace be upon you. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to greet 
uh, our guest, His Excellency Dr. Paul Barros, the Secretary General of Waitro, and also our Chairman, Dr. Laksana Trihandoko, who is represented by uh, His Excellency Dr. R. Hedrian, the Deputy of Research and Innovation Utilizations of Green. All honorable speakers in the panel sessions, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Uh, this way to uh, SDG 2 is established to address the challenge related to achieving SDG 2 or zero hunger. So uh, the theme of this webinar is uh, harvesting global solutions, uniting for zero hunger research collaborations and funding opportunities. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, in the first sessions, we will have uh, speakers who will talk about the initiations of Brin to build international collaborations for the goal of SDG2 or eradicate hunger. Before we start the first panel session, I would like to remind all participants who, who have questions or comments, you might deliver your questions in the QA sessions after all speakers are delivering uh, their talk or you might write your questions and comments in the chat box. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, for the first speaker in the sessions, I will invite Dr. Mulyadi Sinung Haryono, uh, who will deliver his talk about the Indonesian Initiative Program to support SDG2, White Working Group. Uh, Dr. Sinung, <clears throat> he is the Director of Research and Innovation Utilizations at Industries. Brin, okay, Dr. Sinong, for the next 10 minutes, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dr. Ahmad Sefdin, Honorable Secretary General of Baitru, Dr. Paul Spuru, and Chairman of Brin, is presented by Dr. Hendrian. Uh, all distinguished speaker in this session is uh, Dr. Artu, and then uh, Dr. Ajeng Lestari, uh, Dr. Insinor Hespai, and Prof. Carlos Hendrik. Thank you very much. I will uh, share my uh, presentation. It is about the... Uh, how can you see my presentation? Indonesian Initiative Program to Support SDGs. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Okay, thank you. This is... Uh, the first of all, uh, I will uh, say that uh, we want to to have a uh, activities how we can uh, make an activities and white through. This is important for us to support white through with programs. Uh, how we can support white through in a realistic program that we can have together. So we, as we are a national and research and innovation agency so we want to have an indonesian initiative program to support sdg in the terms of research and innovation so first of all a green organization is here we have we are uh, uh, stand under president of republic and indonesia and lead, headed by the green chairman and the vice of chairman so we have here in green organization uh, seven deputy chairman this is three of the deputy chairmen about the policy it is the development policy and the research and innovation policy and regional policy we have also uh, four others uh, deputy chairman about the funding agency this is the science sector linking human resources Deputy Chairman for Research and Innovation Infrastructure and Deputy Chairman for Research and Innovation Facilitation. Another one is the Deputy Chairman for Research and Innovation Utilization is uh, headed by uh, Dr. Henry. Uh, we have also research organization as the executing agency for the research and innovation. We have uh, 12 uh, research organization and the main point this case is a research organization for agriculture and food so the aim of this SDG 2 working group is to build uh, to pull an expert and potential partner so 
this is a networking parts of our researcher in industry and also a, a, a campus to promote the exchange of information with open calls uh, like joint collaboration and other information that we can have to pull the expertise of research and kick starts of collaboration uh, what we want to do uh, in this uh, webinars to advocate uh, for research and innovation this is uh, how we can do it together to raise uh, writing a position papers to engage the private sectors in the international community to meet each other so in the white row sdg2 working group we have already kick off meet kick off on the sdg2 working group on the 14th november 2022 at the white row summit in cape town as uh, dr paul Bull already uh, said that was a uh, 18 participant joined this sdg2 kick off for white room members or non-members so in and then in the meeting on 91st on March uh, 15 and 16, uh, 2023 in Trinidad, Green is willing to lead the SDG2 working group. As, and as a follow-up, we hold today in the webinar on the December 14, uh, 2023 about the SDG2, how we can support Vitro in this case. In this case, we bring offer a program to support SDG to implementation of work by through for members and non-members through joint research collaboration. The research activities focuses what we want to have is the research facility focusing on the research and, and experimental development. So uh, technology new improved product or te technological process innovation uh, breakfast. The other is that uh, We have also want to have uh, research that can be done in our campus in Science Technology Park in uh, Serpong or other our Science Technology Park in uh, Puspitek. So based on this uh, condition, we want to call a short proposal for SDG to help be launched. So the the form of uh, Call for the short proposal is we have an open call for short proposal up to today. So the applicants can uh, submit the proposal through our emails. After one month, we have the short of proposal list with th that we can uh, do and we can uh, have the list. Based on this short of proposal, we want to match the topics to the brief dissertation. So we can have the joint collaboration between the, the applicant and our researcher. And the final proposal between the applicants and the researcher will be funding after we have uh, discussed or we have a review from our green directorate for talent management that will be uh, held by our, uh, our directorate later from Dr. Arthur, and then by the Green Director for Funding or Research and Innovation by Dr. Ajahn Leighton. After we have review, we can have the green or grants announcement after that. So the important date is the call for short proposal is from today until the end of January 2024. So the short of proposal is can be, we have in uh, January 31. Uh, 2024. After that, we have a uh, one more time between the applicants and our researcher to match the topics to, and to find the researcher who, who is a uh, match the topic to uh, our funding. And then the proposal will be uh, submitted to our Directorate for Management Talents and Directorate for Funding for Research and Innovation. So. The requirement for the applicants is a PhD holder that can be from uh, industry or also from uh, white row member or non white row member. Um, they can have the track records of the scientific, based on the scientific publication, what they have. And the research location, what we are really do is in Indonesia, we will facilitate it in our campus based on a science technology park in 
Cipinong or in Puspitek at home. Uh, research partnership with, with Green is uh, mandatory. Um, it is also possible. More than two persons from different organizations is also allowed. The organization can be white crew members, are also non better members, both in Indonesia or overseas. And the duration of the research uh, can be one year and maximum is two years. In the application form, we can uh, have the timeline what we want to do to research in one year or this two years time. So expected output is that we can identify technology offer and technology need what we want to research together uh, in about the zero hunger. We can have the expertise and information exchange, research collaboration, joint publication, transfer technology to industry uh, to strengthen the SDG working groups. So we have here some uh, format of proposal. That will be a project title, and then the affiliation. It is the organization who the applicants is uh, join in. The research team. It is maybe the overseas on the together with our team from Green. The alignment between my research, the research and the topics that that it is choose from Green. Expectation result from the combined research with bring what we want to have. The possibility to continue the research even after finishing the research this time. Also, if at, uh, the research is more than two years, what is the possibility what we can have after that? And the short proposal template can be downloaded at this uh, links, uh, link in this link tree or to write through SDG to work group. And you can have uh, the format of the proposal uh, there. Uh, I think this is the uh, end of my presentation. Uh, the presentation will be sent to uh, Secretariat and you can have the presentation after. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ahmad, for the time. Okay. Thank you very much for... Okay, well, thank you very much for uh, Dr. Sinong, who has been delivering uh, presentations about the initiative programs of BRINS to support SDG 2, including the timeline, also the requirements. Thank you, Dr. Sinong. <clears throat> we come to the next speaker. I will invite uh, Mr. Arthur Ariel Nobiedi. He is the Director of Talent Management Directorate BRINS. He will deliver his talk about the research mobility program, particularly, of course, to run the uh, program to support SDG2. Dr. Arthur, uh, you with me already? So for yes. the next 10 minutes, the time is yours. Please, Dr. Arthur. Thank you for uh, this webinar. Uh, let me share my screen if, if it's available now. Is it on? Okay, well, the, this... So, yes. click this song. Okay, thank you. Uh, now, uh, my name is Arthur. The, uh, I'm the director of talent management from the National Research Innovation Agency. I would like to explain several programs related with the science uh, or researchers. We call this STI talent mobility program. Well, basically, focusing uh, on how we develop human resource capacity development program, doing a uh, using ability, having people. Uh, visiting yeah, researchers, visiting uh, their counterparts uh, from East to abroad or, or vice versa in order to increase their capacity, competency in the research and development field. We are hoping that this, using this mobility program, we can enhance the, the chemistry between these researchers that we can, at the end, we can in, uh, enhance the collaborations for this uh, uh, in, in promoting the especially in the zero hunger. In the researchers program, uh, the program, we are inviting experts. Brin have the ability and we have the to invite I think Dr. Arthur is freeze right now. I think he has problem with his connection. Dr. Arthur? 
Are you with me? Brain. The key point on the researchability that we have the researchers from abroad here, from WETO members, members uh, state can be joining together with the research uh, active brain as part of their collaborations. This kind of research mobility program come in to support this kind of uh, activities. Let's give a little bit information where the locus of brain research area across Indonesia and I would like to 12 research organizations from aeronautic space years, nuclear, energy, earth, earth sciences. They are around, let's say, seven, seven to eight to research centers. One research center may be having right, seven to ten also. Therefore, uh, this is information of the research organization of life, environment, electronics, informatics, maybe which much more related is the one on the agricultures and food. We have six research centers here, organization of agricultural food. One of them is food technology processing, Argoin food corps, horticultures, estate corps, and animal husbandry and appropriate technology. These six research may act as your, what we call an anchor for collaboration, especially in answering in detail and more details on this SDG number two on the zero hunger. Uh, uh, uh, program. So I hope that by knowing your counterpart in Brin, especially this related field, you can big chances to open the collaboration. Once you open the collaborations, one who's your counterpart, we have several program here: the postdoctoral and the visiting researchers program. They have a similar activities, but the dedication itself. On the postdoctoral program activities, we can hire or we can hire a doctoral degree fresh from fresh graduate more, right? And for they should be uh, involved in the research group in Indonesia in Brin, in certain research center, in a certain research group for at least a year of research activity. It can be extended uh, beyond a years depending on the event itself. And for the visiting researchers program, we'll be focusing on develop the collaboration itself. It has a, a shorter period of time, one to three months, postdoctorals, and it and it will be focusing on how we develop, let's say a joint proposal, how we develop capacity building, giving a lecture, a joint lectures, uh, uh, specific topics, yeah, with with and researchers in in a high levels of their, let's say, a very good port of their uh, previous research. On the output side, on the postdoctoral program for two scientific publication during a years, whereas the visiting researcher, we're all focusing on how we make this collaboration, the joint collaboration between outside, outside brain can be an international citizen from uh, or Indonesian citizen also, as they're coming from out of Indonesia. On the terms of condition of this program is an open recruitment program, meaning that you have to have a collaborated partner in. Yeah, having a collaboration, having your host identified earlier give an advantage, meaning that collaborations, you do have a partners in Brin. Second, it should have a expertise which is relevant with the topic itself, meaning that your expertise doctor or even visiting researchers is being expected to, to, to some can overcome some issues related with research in host research. And it can come from Indonesian citizens or international uh, uh, foreigners, uh, others from Brin officials. And for foreign nationals, mind you that you have been required to obtain an immigration permit. There is a system what we call uh, research permit and re uh, ethical clearance. Some of them takes a, year, uh, a, a month or two months. Some of them takes much shorter, much longer, depending on the research. And we do have independent commissions to evaluate. And the point is also you are requested on this postdoctoral and visiting researchers program you have to be in Indonesia during that period of tenure for postdoctoral or even researchers and what we will offer what we will be supporting on the 
outcome that BRIN will provide for either for the postdoctoral and visiting researcher, both of them will be given a round trip economic international ticket from Jakarta, your, uh, from your country to Indonesia, and in, uh, incentive will be given living allowances, monthly living allowances will be provided around, this is the number, uh, around 1,000 US dollars, visiting researchers like around 1,100 US dollars and non-professors doctoral degree around 12 uh, US dollars monthly. Yeah, this is monthly allowance fee that will provide on your uh, time when you are doing the and visiting researchers. All the insurance and so on needed should be born uh, fund that we will provide you when you arrive in Indonesia. Just giving information, so we have currently we have 364 postdoctorals with the visiting researchers. This is the numbers of distributions. Like I said, life science environments and also energy manufacturers and materials has more collaborations, meaning that it's really open any uh, area, but we are focusing in zero hunger, maybe more likely in those with agriculture and food. There are still quite not so many, 16 or two visiting researchers under this, under this research organizations. We're hoping that a white rock program, the SDGs program, the open club proposal, Pak Sino mentions early, it gives potential uh, uh, uh, collaborations from outside brain to part of this collaboration to submit the proposal and then using our research program we can support on this research activities and this is the idea on this how we create the big key point is the the yellow box here this is research project the proposal that you will be later on uh, pro uh, providing which then will be making research center or in the other hand if you do have previous collaboration it will be much better through these collaborations then uh, on the researchers mobility program sitting researchers postdoctoral will be put there and the other hand uh, there is a funding which after this maybe the director of research fund will uh, uh, elaborate on her slide how many how many programs of research collab of funding especially research can be uh, uh, uh, to and be used and utilized to, to support the program. But the key point is this is the joint research project between the international collaborators, partners, and the Indonesian side. This creates a key point which will act as for the longer collaborations. So this is the website. You have a very short time minutes of presentations. This is quite brief. Any uh, further inquiry, you can email to the fellowship green at go.id and you can uh, uh, uh, the management talent tab green.go.id this postdoctoral program and sitting researcher program will be open annually but currently will be opening in maybe let's say early january later on 2024 but beforehand we hope you all you start to create the connections the researchers connections on there are 85 research centers, 770 something research group. Beyond that, amongst that 700 research group, I believe there's some researchers have uh, uh, in, uh, uh, interest in some research, collaborate especially on the specific on the zero hunger. I think that's all part uh, of my presentations. We're hoping that it's quite clear enough. We, we are supporting the researchers program to enhance the possibility of matchmaking uh, uh, and, uh, and of this research collaboration. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Arthur, uh, who has been delivering a very attractive research mobility programs, particularly, of course, to support SCG2. So what we can highlight is that if you want to partner, you have to find the partner first uh, from the build units to apply the program that uh, Arthur offered. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Arthur. We come to the third speaker. We will have uh, Dr. Ajeng Arum, Ajeng Arum Sari. Yeah. She is the Director of Research and Innovation Fund of Green. She will deliver uh, her research funding program or call for proposal, particularly, of course, the SDG2 program. 
uh, Dr. Ajeng for the next uh, 10 minutes. Uh, Dr. Ajeng, are you with me? I think Dr. Ajeng. Says not here yet. Yeah? Uh, I can make it, uh, Dr. Ahmad. I can make it uh, before him if you like. A minute. Yeah. If if he's oh, not, not yet. It's not, yet, uh, not here yet. Okay. Okay. So I can. Okay. I have to skip uh, the time for uh, Dr. Ajam. I come to the fourth speaker. So okay, I will introduce her, Dr. Insinor Hasbai. Yeah. Uh, she is a senior chief researcher uh, from Tupitak Mam Vice Presidency of Life Sciences, Food Innovation Technologies Research Group Leader, the Republic of Turkey. Yeah, she will share uh, her experience as the best practice strategy of the international collaboration in implementing SDG2. Okay, so Dr. Insinor, uh, for the next 10 minutes, the time is yours, please. Thank you, Dr. Ahmad. I think you can see my presentation now as full Perfect. Perfect. Perfect. Hello, everyone. My name is Ingenor Hasbai. I'm a food engineer, and I'm the research group leader of Food Innovation Technologies Research Group in Tubitak Marmara Research Center under Life Sciences. Uh, actually, we have two research groups under the research organization of Life Sciences. One of them is Food Innovation Technologies, and the other is Food Safety and Quality Research Group. Uh, both are interrelated, uh, of course. We collaborate highly uh, with these within these groups as well as other research groups in Marmara Research Center. Here as food research groups, we have 52 personnel, uh, 22 laboratories. We have a food processing pilot plant and also uh, nine pilot plants for producing different groups of foods. Within the food safety and quality research groups, we aim, uh, our first aim is uh, to perform applied R&D studies to ensure food safety and quality from field to fork for sustainable food supply security, which serves for SDG2 uh, also. Also here we develop test and analysis methods and reference materials to be used in laboratories. As a third aim, we perform analysis and training consultancy services for providing food safety and traceability in food value chain, which also serves for SDG2. In our second group, which is Food Innovation and Technologies Research Group, we have two teams. One of them uh, performs innovative applications for food processing here. We perform studies for uh, developing alternative food sources, utilize food byproducts and wastes, which mainly serve for SDG2 as well. Now I would like to give some examples for our projects serving to SDG2. We have national and international projects uh, which serve for SDG2. One of them is Smart Application Research Center for Food Supply Security. Let me explain it briefly. The project's goal is to establish a research facility to create advanced research, development, and technological diffusion through various disciplines to produce agricultural and food safety solutions. This is open to all universities and organizations in national and international scale. And uh, you are welcome to collaborate with us within this project. Another one is a national project, actually a platform uh, developed for sustainable agricultural technologies uh, compatible with global climate change in Turkey's agricultural production. Here, our basic aim, basic aim of the platform is to develop solutions and products for all components of sustainable agriculture through technologies compatible with global climate change in agricultural production of Turkey. Here as Tubitak MRC, uh, we take place within this platform for the utilization of agricultural wastes and byproducts 
for development of value added products. Here you can see our working team here. We interrelate and collaborate with each other and other universities and companies as well. Uh, we have six companies uh, to commercialize the products that we develop under this platform. Uh, here we will obtain a technology readiness level of about six or seven and the companies will produce them and bring to the level of nine. I mentioned this. And we have an international project, Micro Twin. The general objective of this is strengthening strength, uh, research in the field of mycotoxigenic fungi and mycotoxins in Turkey by providing a link to leading research institutions, uh, which are CNR, ISPA, and UV. Uh, we have three basic uh, goals, which is biodiversity and molecular identification of toxigenic fungi, rapid taste and advanced analysis techniques for mycotoxins, we develop those. And as a third one, we manage uh, toxigenic fungi and mycotoxins in agrofood chain. We have many activities within this project, short-term visits, technical visits, info days, workshops, etc. Uh, you can follow us from uh, social media as well. Uh, as another international project, I would like to give this example, which is development of national mycotoxin early warning systems utilizing climate and image data. Uh, and also we have an international project. I would like to mention about the collaboration opportunities uh, within this project, IPA InnoFood project. Here, the main objective is to assist the SMEs operating in the food and beverage sector in some part of Turkey. Uh, but now we um, developed this for whole Turkey and also uh, out of Turkey. Uh, also, another aim is to improve the quality and safety of products of food and beverage sector. Uh, this whole project serves for SDG2. The project has uh, basically four components. As the first component, we have a food innovation center here. I can show it, uh, the pictures and you are welcome here to see our uh, center. Uh, here we have nine pilot scale processing lines in this building. These lines you can see you can see in this slide. Uh, nine pilot lines for processing nine groups of uh, food. Uh, we developed these lines as a result of demand and option analysis. They serve for leading the food industry. They have an expert potential and can create value added through uh, R&D studies. As a component too, uh, also we would like to welcome you, uh, all the organizations, universities and private sector, either national or international in this platform. Uh, we, we developed a food innovation platform of Turkey here within this IPA InnoFood project, which aims to uh, network and cluster all related actors at the food and beverage sectors. Here our aim is uh, as the TÜGİP, Food Innovation Platform of Turkey, uh, and also as Marmara Research Center, our aim is uh, to work together for collaboration and co-creation. <coughs> As to give, we have uh, five principles, co-creation, confidentiality, accountability, integrity, and impartiality. Uh, we have three main services as technology and innovation, ecosystem, and business development. Also, we have five thematic areas. <clears throat> we perform workshops uh, to develop the main working areas within these five thematic areas. Also, you are very welcome to join all those uh, studies. We have many activities, of course, <clears throat> for creating awareness 
uh, also so social media promotions, assessments, B2B project meetings, trainings, workshops, and role model projects. Uh, we performed many committee meetings, many workshops, as you can see here, I can share my presentation with you. Uh, we performed many trainings uh, during a few years. Also, we have uh, for now 157 members of to uh, to and uh, from different uh, scales of companies and also universities and organizations. So as to give, uh, I would like to repeat that our basic aim is for uh, collaboration and co-creation. So we can collaborate to, within our national and international projects within this platform. Uh, and I will share my presentation and my uh, contact details with you so that we can discuss together later. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Insinor Hasbai for delivering very excellent talks. These are so many yeah, uh, offers from 2 Tech that possible to collaborate with, uh, particularly for supporting SDG2. Uh, I'm personally very interested with your uh, offer because I want to see Cappadocia. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Engineer Hasbai. <clears throat> okay. We come to the last uh, speaker for this panel session because I haven't seen uh, Dr. Ajang. So we, I will invite Professor Carlos Henrik de Brito Cruz. Uh, he is Senior Vice President of Research Networks at Elsevier. He will talk about the importance of empowering research technology organization or RTO in supporting SDG2. Uh, Professor Carlos, are you with me? Professor Carlos, yes, not here yet, also. Okay, not yet. Okay, because Professor Carlos also uh, not yet available, also uh, Dr. Ajeng. I will directly uh, come to the QA sessions. Uh, so that's why I will invite uh, participants who has uh, questions please raise your hand and you can directly uh, ask the questions to our speakers. Is there any uh, participant? Okay, we already have one uh, participant who raised uh, his hand, Dr. Ahmad Suryadi. Dr. Ahmad Suryadi. Yes, thanks. Okay, thanks, please. your mother. Yes. Yes, very nice to talk with the uh, the experts about the white throw programs. And then this is the first time I, I uh, join with you guys regarding the the program. Yeah. And uh, first of all, I would like to know about the uh, uh, reset priority uh, in order to uh, cope with the you know uh, with the hunger. So. So what is the uh, research programs, especially in the brain, uh, in order to, you know, to, to cope with the hunger? This is why I ask you this, because this can, can be, you know, to, to address that what sort of uh, proposal we have to develop. It. That can be di different. If you, pro uh, if you, uh, uh, you develop the profile uh, based on, on, on, on the farmer, on, on the people, uh, impact that's going to be you know we have to we have to uh, arrange or the designers uh, proposal that really touch to the to the farmer welfare and then and the, and the second one is uh, what is the uh, research uh, what I'm saying is a uh, research for development is we conduct the research in order to apply the result of research for the benefit of the uh, stakeholder, like, you know, uh, uh, people, uh, uh, a farmer or something like that. That's, uh, that's again, if we develop the uh, 
uh, the proposal in that site will be different with uh, the developing proposal in order for the scientific basis. So, so please uh, uh, enlighten me uh, priority of the uh, program uh, in uh, uh, a brain uh, collaborated with Vitro. Uh, the second uh, next question I uh, propose to the to Doctor uh, Ainu. I sorry, I uh, Insino. Uh, sorry, Insino. Yeah, uh, very nice. Uh, Turkey is uh, you know Turkey is. Uh, a major uh, is, is Islamic uh, population as uh, in Indonesia as well. So, do you have any experience on the uh, halal food for the qualities of uh, of uh, uh, halal rich food in in quality, uh, in in Turkey? And uh, if so, please uh, maybe you uh, you know you uh, share your experience uh, and uh, uh, maybe we can uh, get together. Uh, collaborated the the the, the, the, the uh, type of the uh, research to to produce the halal uh, or uh, in in for the for the Muslim uh, food. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ahmad Suryadi. I think the first question will uh, should be addressed to Dr. Sinung. Me. Could you elaborate the uh, is. You okay, address yeah. me, right? <laughs> uh, the second, the second one. Now, Dr. Okay. Sinung first, I think. Uh, because uh, okay, thank it's you. about uh, the pro priority, the proposal. Okay. okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ahmad. Uh, about the priority of the research, uh, we follow uh, the priority of the brains, uh, what we have right now. For example, uh, what we call here room program. And the the priority will be presented by our uh, research and organization chairman of Green, uh, Ibu Pujilestari, in the next session. So you can follow the presentation later. Also about the benefit from the farmer or about the scientific basis for this question, uh, what I have already presented uh, before, we we uh, want to have uh, some research that is uh, near to the industry if it is possible thank you Pak Ahmad, you ready for your question okay thank you i thank think it's very clear uh, the answer from uh, dr sinum uh, the second questions uh, was addressed to dr insinor hasbai mm -hmm. about halal food program in turkey thank you dr Ahmad. Uh, yes, uh, we have studies about halal food. Uh, we have uh, studies in three categories. First, uh, we develop test and analysis systems for uh, determining pork genes or other uh, genes which are not halal. halal. We also we develop quick and uh, safe uh, test and analysis methods. Uh, as a second working area, we develop alternative food additives uh, which will take place uh, the uh, gelatin for example as an animal source uh, gelatin is obtained from uh, not pork but um, but you, you, other other animal sources in turkey but contamination may uh, appear uh, pork genes uh, were found in uh, some products in Turkey which were intended to be produced as halal. We tested them and we found pork cheese. So uh, as a result, we concluded that contamination may uh, have happened. Uh, the pork gelatin may might have contaminated the gelatin that is used in the product. So we developed, for example, Pectin as an alternative to gelatin or modified starch to be used as an alternative to gelatin. This is our second area uh, of research for um, halal. Uh, also, we have studies to eliminate ethanol alcohol from food press processes uh, in the extraction or in the uh, uh, filtration, purification of uh, beta glucane, pectin, ethanol, it has to be used. So we 
uh, eliminate ethanol and develop other uh, technologies for the extraction of purification, which are also environmentally friendly, both halal and environment, environmental friendly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for your answer, uh, Dr. Insinor Hasbaya. Take a click uh, the program that has been run in Turkey in uh, halal food program. Okay, we come to the next uh, questioner. Uh, Dr. Joseph Blaise Dongmo, okay. Okay, please elaborate your question. Uh, you, I think, uh, we, we cannot hear your voice yet. Yeah. I don't know, is there any uh, problem okay. with the Ah, the voice. Okay, please. And now, now it's very clear. Okay, I am Dr. Joseph Blaise Omo from University of Yaoundé, Cameroon. Okay, my question is uh, uh, uh, for uh, about uh, collaboration with uh, Turkish because uh, Dr. Ensino Asbai. Uh, uh, have uh, a, a part of my research proposal like uh, uh, have to to go um, to look in the all process of agricultural uh, innovation to farm from farm to fork okay I I, I I would like to know if it's possible for us to collaborate because in Cameroon you, you have you have uh, some analysis you don't can do because the lack of uh, infrastructure and equipment okay i don't know if it's possible to collaborate with uh, in some aspect of our uh, project uh, like the eDNA survey for, from, uh, to looking for soy biodiversity uh, and so on. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, Tom, thank you. I got your uh, question, doctor. So, okay, Dr. Insinor Hasbay, could you elaborate his question? Uh -huh. Yes, Dr. Jo Joseph, certainly we can collaborate. Uh, now, our project is ongoing and we can contact with you for research opportunities in your uh, subject in our uh, continuing projects, right? Uh, I can share my email address and my presentation with you, and we can collaborate for the uh, opportunities for us to collaborate. Okay. Okay, yeah, because actually uh, this uh, webinar is designed to collaborate uh, mm -hmm. for, from the speakers and all uh, participants. Okay, thank you, Dr. Insinor. So we still have time. Uh, we still have a participant who raised uh, her hand, uh, Ms. Tiurma PT Simajuntak. Tiurma, Ms. Tiurma. Hello, Ms. Tiurma. Do you want to? Yes. Yeah, yeah, please. Hi, good, uh, good afternoon uh, to the audience and to the um, speaker. Um, I really, I wanted to know about to Dr. She that uh, talk about uh, the halal food because we have to, I mean, uh, while we having food with uh, non-halal, so we have to uh, accept it as the waste food and then we supposed to uh, fade it away so uh, do you have any solution uh, how to um, appreciate non-halal food uh, pricely especially to doctor in the, in the uh, to the, yeah that that really uh, in charge uh, talking about halal and non halal food and then uh, we know that the price for the food uh, lately uh, it's so high and then it's really impossible in nowadays 
uh, gaining a kind of um, cheap and healthy food. So do you have any suggest uh, in the kind of the uh, brain research that can that could color, collapse with our country. Thank you for your answer, ma'am. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Tiorma. I think the questions is should be thrown to uh, Dr. Nasbay. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah, you. About, yeah, the non-halal food. Yes. Okay, please. Yes, it's a very good question. Uh, as uh, food engineers and also Tibetak Marma Resource Center food groups, uh, we aim to develop uh, cheap sources or sources with uh, compatible prices of uh, to to be used in food products, cheap food additives, uh, healthy or uh, for healthy and functional foods, and also cheap additives uh, as an alternative to uh, animal products, which will serve for halal food, and also. Uh, as you know, uh, in terms of Green Deal, we aim to develop plant-based alternatives uh, instead of animal-based sources. Uh, I mentioned about pectin and modified starch before uh, as an alternative to gelatin. Uh, they have cheap prices, so they will not increase the price. And also, we develop solutions uh, to take place ethanol uh, and our solutions include uh, water, basically, which is cheaper than ethanol, but we uh, also try to decrease the use of water. In terms of healthy products, you are so right. We develop functional foods for to decrease the risk of diabetes, for example, or heart diseases. Uh, those are um, a little bit uh, more exp uh, expensive than the regular products, but we are trying to develop national policies to support the producers so that the price of the functional food products would lower. I hope I covered your question correctly. Yeah, yeah. I think quite clear, yeah. uh, Dr. Yeah. Nasbay. Uh, yeah. Thank you so thank much for your elaborating uh, the questions. Uh, because now we already have uh, Dr. Ajeng Arum Sari, yeah? Uh, she is already here. Yeah, uh, she is the director of research and innovation fund of Brin. She will uh, deliver his presentations about call for proposal for SDG two or zero hunger eradications. Uh, Doctor Ajang, yeah, uh, for the next about ten minutes. Yeah, the time is yours. Okay, can you hear me and see the our slide? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm happy to be able to join today's webinar uh, to support the SDGs regarding the zero hunger. So uh, I will explain about the research and innovation funding that maybe we can, uh, you can use this scheme. Uh, our directorate is uh, under deputy for the research and innovation facilitation. And of course, uh, as the roles, as the funding agency, we try to strengthen the national research and innovation ecosystem as the uh, funding agency. So we have responsibility to facilitate the research and innovation funding scheme. And we know that the WITRO is the non-governmental and non-profit association, and uh, the WITRO full members uh, is consists of the fifty-nine countries and one hundred thirteen member organizations. And of course, we hope that the these all members can play an active role in the uh, scheme facilitated by Brin. Yeah. Uh, Brain others to open a platform system here, meaning that the all programs created by Brain as the funding agency can be utilized by all stakeholders, including uh, the academic industry, uh, and also the startup, and also of course the community. And we provide the program that 
can develop science and technology, human resources, infrastructure, and research funding. And of course, through this collaboration, uh, we open to the foreign partners from white row members who wish to conduct research with Spring in Indonesia. So we have the several uh, funding scheme here, and most of which are funded uh, using the return from the research and uh, endowment uh, funds by managed by the LPDP uh, from the Ministry of Finance. So uh, we have the Research and Innovation for Onward Indonesia, RIM, or we call it RIM, RIM Competition, and then RIM Expedition, Research Collaboration Center, RIM Startup, RIM Invitation, Selling Days Facilitation, Innovation Product Testing Grant in Health, Innovation Product Testing Grant in Agriculture, and the last one is the RIM Collaboration. You can access all these schemes uh, through our website, uh, penanaansriplisnov.blind.go.id. One of our scheme is the RIM collaboration. So this scheme is an implementation of Green Target as a platform for inclusive and collaborative global cooperation between Green and international funding agencies to increase the international research collaboration between Indonesia researchers and other countries. This is the uh, several funding agencies that we have cooperation uh, such as the BMGF, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, DFG, Tubita, uh, Most China, E-Asia, uh, Satraps, NEDO, GFSC, AU, LPDP, and also DFAT uh, from Australia. So, um, and this is, uh, this slide shows several our cooperation with the funding agencies. Uh, we can see here that the, uh, we have for example, we have the cooperation with the Bill and Melinda Gates uh, Foundation with topic banana pre-breeding and characterization. Uh, we will do the joint collaboration here. And also we have cooperation with the SATREP in the topic environment and energy, bioresources, etc. And also with the connexi, with, uh, the, also with the specific topics. And I will explain uh, about the uh, one of scheme the rim competition so uh, we hope that the uh, in the future uh, we will do the open call for uh, to the uh, through this scheme uh, for the white row members so the goals of the RIM competition funding program is to increase the amount of the research to obtain the novelty, technological renewal, and other research results. And uh, to increase the number of invention from the research results that have potential to be further developed to produce innovation. And also the increase uh, the active contribution of the stakeholders, uh, both government and private, in the research activities. And of course, increase the quantity and quality human resources. Actually, the for this stream competition is open for the many topics, uh, but uh, not only food, health, and energy, but also the other topics such as the efficient space, biology, environment, etc. Until now, we already uh, we already have the one thousand and one hundred sixty six project, uh, and the total funding is the five hundred forty three billion rupees. Uh, it's uh, competitive between the brain and also the non brain It means that the university uh, also can join in this game. And based on the focus area, we have uh, several topics here, uh, such as the food, health, energy, uh, social humanities, etc. Of course, the most uh, grantee uh, are obtained from the food uh, focus area. And we know that in Indonesia uh, itself, uh, zero hunger is strongly correlated with the uh, problem of stunting. Uh, nearly the maybe the thirty-seven percent of uh, Indonesian toddlers experience stunting due to the malnutrition. So uh, it's why uh, research related with the zero hunger or the stunting themes is uh, also 
mostly uh, funded uh, by our scheme. We can see here that uh, in the focus area of food uh, regarding this funding, is, uh, we have the total project 15 uh, are funded by our uh, RIM competition scheme. Here we can see in the batch one, uh, we found uh, seven uh, project and then two, three, and three in the batch uh, four. And also it's uh, from the Breen and also from the university. And in the zero hunger team, uh, we also got the project from the focus area policy and the social humanities. We have the nine projects here. Uh, in the batch one, you know, there are two projects, and then four, and then three projects in the batch three. And also in the focus area multidisciplinary, we have the four projects regarding the zero hunger team. Yeah, uh, so last but not least, uh, we are ready to collaborate with the all Waitro members here in the research and mobility, infrastructure utilization, and also, of course, in our scheme, uh, research collaboration in the Zero Hunger team. I hope that uh, our research collaboration on Zero Hunger can help with a safer uh, and more prosperous world for the everyone, especially for the uh, Waitro member countries. Thank you. Oke, okay, thank you very much Dr. Ajan Arum Sari. Um, ya, yeah, very excellent presentations about uh, funding programs, particularly uh, to support SDG 2. Oke, okay, uh, I will again uh, because uh, we already have a QA sessions. I will give opportunity to a participant who already wrote um uh, his questions in the chat box <clears throat> uh, QA uh this question is from uh Dr Suratno from Research Center for Food Processing Technology uh this question is delivered to uh Dr Hasbai and the question is that uh, is there any opportunity to collaborate in mycotoxin analysis, analysis areas, detections, analysis, etc. Because we have identified some mycotoxin in online commercial product by the method is untargeted screening, SPLC, it's RMS. We cannot quantify the mycotoxin concentrations because we cannot get the standards or Uh, CRM, yeah. Uh, is there uh, then uh, is there any uh, possibility to collaborate with about that? And the second question is that uh, thank you for your suggestions about changing the porcine gelatin to pectin. Is kind of new things uh, for us, uh, Doctor Hasbai. Dr. Hasbai? Dr. Isiner Hasbai? I think she is the off uh, her computer yet. Okay. Uh, we come to the second, uh, I think, comments. I think I will invite directly um, Mr. Patrick Diaz. Mr. Patrick Diaz, are you with me? Hello. If if you here in the in the in the participant list, you can raise your hand and you can uh, give your comments directly, or I will read your comments. Hello, that was Patrick. I think I will. I think I I will uh, just read uh, his comments. Uh, hi, I am Patrick Hello. Diaz from CSIRO, Australia Hello. Strategy Team. In our Hello. strategy, uh, in food security and quality, is a key challenge. We do significant investment in food security and quality, uh, profitable agricultural productions, improve crop and animals, high value foods and feeds, sustainable and trusted 
value chains. I'm sure there would be a potential collaboration in this area. Could you please provide the best green contact and some program details so that I could share it with the relevant group at CSIRO? Thank you. I think the question should be uh, come to uh, Dr. Sinung first. Dr. Sinung. Thank you, Dr. Ahmad, for this uh, question uh, about the, the contact person. So if the contact is about the technical methods, then it comes to our chairman of research organization on agriculture and food. And if it's about the, how the products will be utilized, then it, it, it will come to Dr. Hendrian in this case. So. Uh, depends on what we want to do and what we want to share in with uh, Mr. Patrick Dias. I think. Thank you, Dr. Ahmad. This is my uh, answer. Okay. okay, thank you so much uh, for elaborating the question, Dr. Sinung. Uh, Dr. Hasbai, you already uh, joined with us, right? So we have a question for you. Yes. Uh, yeah, this question is from Mr. Suratno from uh, the research center for uh, food processing uh, technology uh, the question is that is there any opportunity to collaborate in mycotoxin analysis areas uh, in the area of detection analysis etc because uh, uh, mr suratno have identified some mycotoxin in online commercial products in the market mm -hmm. by the method is that Untargeted screening SPLC HRMS. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Mr. Suratno cannot quantify it, the mycotoxin uh, concentration, of course, because uh, he cannot get the standard or, or CRM. Uh, is there any possible to collaborate in this term? And the second question, and the second is about comments. Uh, uh, thank you for your suggestions to uh, Cheng. A porcine gelatin to pectin. It is something new for uh, Mr. Suratno. Uh, please elaborate the question uh, of Mr. Suratno, Dr. Hasbay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Ahmad, and thank you, Mr. Suratno. Of course, we can collaborate in terms of mycotoxins. Our, uh, actually, our uh, food safety and quality group has been focused on mycotoxins for years, and we have collaborative uh, international projects in this area. Uh, again, also, I will share my email address with you and we can contact uh, in this. We also have a, a fungi culture. Uh, with this fungi culture also, uh, we can develop new uh, products and collaborate with you. In terms of mycotoxins, we both deal with uh, aflatoxins and ocratoxins. Uh, so yes, that's all. We can uh, contact and uh, discuss about the collaboration opportunities, about the projects and funds. We will be happy to collaborate. Okay, thank you so much for your response, uh, Dr. Hasbay. Uh, I'm still waiting. Is there any question again from the floor? I haven't seen anybody uh, raise uh, his hand. Uh, not yet. Okay. Well, if not, <clears throat> uh, I think uh, I will continue uh, for the second sessions. Before that, um, maybe I will uh, maybe uh, briefly uh, briefly to uh, wrap up the decisions. Uh, what we can summarize is that uh, for Greens, as the major research organizations or research agency in Indonesia, uh, already ready with the programs to support SDG2. And we already have this, uh, our partner, uh, Dr. Insinor Hasbe from Turkey, who also willing to collaborate with uh, our partners of WETO members. Uh, finally, of course, Green invites uh, our partners to collaborate together, working together with Greens 
to run many innovative research programs to eradicate hunger globally. I think that will be the my wrap up for this session. Thank you for all uh, speakers for this session. Uh, before we come to the second uh, sessions, I will uh, offer for the speakers. Should we start uh, from now? Because we have uh, Professor Julian. In fact, I think you already here, right? Professor Julian. Professor Julian. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, I'm okay. There. You already with me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think we should we can continue for the second session. Uh, sorry, okay. uh, Dr. Ahmad, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, Professor uh, Cruz already joined in the oh, Zoom. Oh, okay, so... well. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. I'm sorry, Dr. Uh, Professor Julian. Yeah, we already have our uh, speaker from the first session, uh, Professor... Carlos Henrik de Prito uh, Cruz. Uh, he is senior vice president of research network at Elsevier. Okay. So, uh, Professor Carlos, for the next 10 minutes, the time is yours. Thank you very much, Dr. Ashmat. It's a pleasure to, to take part in this session on sustainable development goal number two and i will share my screen let's see if if i can get it to work correctly here um, recording we haven't seen your slide yeah i'm trying to to find it here just one second <laughs> Do you have that on screen? It's perfect, perfect. Yeah, thank you. So I'm I'm gonna talk up some brief ideas about uh how uh, we can use some uh, bibliometric tools to find and to identify uh, research technology organizations' uh, participation in research related to the sustainable development goal number two, zero hunger, uh, in order, for example, to identify opportunities for uh, collaboration in research. So uh, you all know that there are uh, 17 sustainable development goals. I'm a member of the United Nations 10 member group that works to facilitate research collaboration around the goals. And of course, sustainable development goal number two, which aims at ending hunger, achieving food security and improved nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture worldwide is a very important one, especially uh, for countries in the global south. And uh, at Elsevier, we developed a system that is able to identify using automatic methods, uh, research publications, which relate to each one of the sustainable development goals. And by doing that, this tool facilitates the identification of the publications, then, of course, the identification of the authors, their institutions, and the funders that support that uh, research. We uh, use this tool uh, from a database of 85 million scientific publications, which is called Scopus. And we have been developing it for many years now, starting in 2015. And for example, for each one of the 85 million records in Scopus, we are able to have what is marked there on the screen, an identification on which uh, one is the, or more than one, sustainable development goals relate that that publication relates to. For example, for this one here, Amazonian Earthworm Biodiversity, 
it relates to life on land, sustainable development goal number 15. So all of the publications are classified. Many of them are not related to any sustainable development goals, but about 35 to 40 percent, depending on the region and the country, are related to one of the sustainable development goals. So that makes a tool which is very useful. I'm going to, to, to, to show to you some of the possibilities. Uh, for example, we can uh, study the case of Brazil, which we show on the left side here. Uh, that shows the number of publications in the two years, 2018, 2019, uh, related to each one of the sustainable development goals. That's in, in absolute quantities. And then we can normalize that to a relative activity index so that we can compare countries to look at their uh, intensity of research in relation to each one of the sustainable development goals, as I show here. And we can, for example, track changes from 2011 to 2018 for the case in the left of the United States, where you have uh, a cobweb here, which is rather broad. So in most uh, sustainable development goals, they have a number of publications, which is above the world average, which is the dark uh, dashed line. On the right side, we have the case for China, which is still increasing its coverage of all uh, sustainable development goals. Here I show additional data for two regions in the global south, which are Latin America on the left and Africa on the right, where again, it's possible to track the changes and the efforts that the countries have been doing. If we talk about sustainable development goals number two, I wanted to highlight, for example, that one thing that we can learn from this uh, using this tool is that in Latin America, that there has been a, an enormous growth in the number of publications related to sustainable development goal uh, number two, uh, so that uh, not only the absolute number grew, as shown on the left, but the percentage of publications, the contribution to the world total uh, rose from uh, about 3% in 1990 to 12% of all world publications related to sustainable development goal number two, uh, uh, starting in 2010, showing that there was a, a, a, a reasonable effort in the region to increase its capability and its capacity of creating new knowledge related to uh, ending hunger. Uh, here I, I bring to you a view about uh, making broader regions in the world, showing uh, in this figure the blue line, all countries in the world dedicated to sustainable development goal number two. And in the red line, I show the evolution of the number of publications which relate to sustainable development goal number two and have authors in low-income countries, low, uh, lower and uh, middle-income countries, and upper middle-income countries. So you will see that back in the 70s or the, or the 80s, most of the publications had authors in high-income countries. And then as time went by, now more than half of the publications have authors in uh, low, low and medium income countries, as I show here in this <coughs> figure on the right side, which shows that the percentage of publications with authors in high income countries has been decreasing and low income countries have been more prominent in, uh, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, in presenting research related to sustainable development goal number two, as shown in the red line. About 70% almost of the all publications in the world around sustainable development goal number two have at least one author in a low or in a middle income country. Uh, we can also uh, look at uh, the, the picture in terms of the contribution of countries in the low and middle income countries region uh, category of the World Bank, 
and you will see that China, India, Brazil, Indonesia, South Africa, Pakistan, Russia Federation uh, lead uh, the pack in terms of their contribution to studying uh, ways and generating knowledge related to uh, reducing uh, <clears throat> hunger in the world. And in this figure, which might be of uh, more interest for this conversation, I show the main uh, research organizations in the Global South that relate to sustainable development goal number two. There is a large number which are uh, organizations in China, and then there, is, there are organizations in uh, India, in uh, Brazil, uh, then uh, in uh, Mexico and in several other countries in the region, in the south, in, the, in what is called the global uh, south. And uh, or to, to close, I wanted to, to show you also the in terms of the funders, the main research funders in the world, funding research related to sustainable development goal number two. Which in, and here I list the ones which are uh, which fund research that has authors and lead researchers in the global south. The red bars show show the ones the funders which are located in countries in the global south, and the blue bars show the, the funders that are located in uh, high income countries, but fund research that has authors or principal investigators in the global south. Uh, there is a strong participation here in the figure by organizations from China, funders, the National Natural Science Foundation of China is very strong. Then organizations in Brazil, like the National Research Council of Brazil and the coordination for training uh, researchers in higher education, also in Brazil. Uh, then there is the Sao Paulo Research Foundation in Brazil. There, India also has some uh, strong organizations like the Indian Council of Agricultural Research uh, and uh, several other funders like the Consejo Nacional de Ciencia y Tecnología de México. So there is a, a th th this type of analysis offers uh, ways to identify possible organizations to collaborate and to fund research uh, in collaboration around sustainable development goal number two. And this is my last slide. I wanted to summarize here. I have shown to you that there are ways to use bibliometrics to, to have a window to see and to learn about how research around each one of the sustainable development goals is distributed around the world. And of course, that can be used for sustainable development goal number two. There is a strong growth in publications with authors in low and middle income countries. They are in more than half of the publications starting from 2015. Uh, the main countries in terms of the number of publications are in the global south, right? Are China, India, Brazil, Indonesia, uh, South Africa, Pakistan, and Russia. And uh, for research collaboration, we have seen uh, some of the waiter initiatives in this session. I wanted to add here that research funders across the globe have initiatives that support research around the sustainable development goals. The Global Research Council, uh, of which I was a uh, co-chair in 2019 and 2020, when I was a uh, scientific director at the Sao Paulo Research Foundation in Brazil, the Global Research Council has a special task force tar targeting sustainable development, which of course includes sustainable development too, and uh, looks for opportunities to develop collaborations among funders to jointly fund research in this, uh, in this topic. And the Sao Paulo Research Foundation, FAPESP in Brazil, has a strong program of centers and research collaboration, again, around sustainable development goal number two. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Professor uh, Brito who has as
very excellent uh, presentations for using bibliometric uh, method yeah to find yeah uh, research related to SDG two. Uh, so now I will again uh, open the Q A sessions. Particularly, we want to uh, have a questions to Professor Brito. Is there any uh, participant who want to uh, or have uh, questions? Okay, we have uh, Mr. Patrick Diaz. Please, uh, Mr. Patrick. Hi, Professor Cruz. I'm uh, from CSR Australia. Uh, I have a question to you. Actually, it is a very interesting uh, exercise about the bibliometrics, what you have presented, particularly in relation to the SDGs. Uh, my question is, have you done any sort of a similar studies related to the research and technology organizations alone? That's one Thank question. You. Also, okay. I have a comment about uh, the bibliometrics uh, because we do a fair number of similar comparative studies across the globe as well as across the uh, RTOs and uh, uh, publicly funded research organizations in Australia. Uh, mm -hmm. The uh, bibliometric uh, uh, metrics are mostly lag indicators. So when you said that about the uh, trend of the high income countries versus the low income countries, this could be a reflection, not a current status, but could be four or five years back research activity. Uh, that's just a comment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Th thank you. Okay, please. Thank please. you very much. Thank you very much, Doctor. Sh should I respond now? Yeah, yeah, please. Okay. Can respond right Thank now. you very much for, for the question, Dr. Diaz. They are both very opportune and, and pertinent. Uh, first uh, question was if we can identify research technology organizations using this method. Yes, we can. The main challenge is how do we define precisely research technology organizations? But we can provide with this method of bibliometrics a, a list of all the organizations in the world, thousands of them, that uh, contribute knowledge to sustainable development goal number two. Uh, we can, for example, if that's of interest for <laughs> Waitro, map this table into the uh, list of member, uh, members which are associated to Waitro, where we have research technology organizations. And I say that the definition is not completely clear to me at this moment, because, for example, some we have universities, we have research organizations, and we have sometimes governmental organizations. But it is possible to identify the entities which are uh, related, which are of the type research technology organizations and that publish in sustainable development goal number two. Perfectly possible. The second point, I, I agree with you that when we look at publications, there is a lag. Maybe it's not as long as five years now because the time to between research and publication in certain fields could be three years, but there is a lag. Uh, but the point is that I, I still emphasize that this growth in the number of publications of authors in the global south is something that, as you have seen from the figure, seems very, very solid. It's really going up at a, a high speed while uh, the number of publications that have authors only in the global north has been decreasing. And this is, to me, it looks almost natural because countries in the global south have been doing for the last, I don't know, 80 years, 100 years, have been trying to develop their research systems, and they have been successful at that. So that the landscape of research in the world 
is changing. And this must be recognized because uh, it's not possible to, to, to live or to consider that we still live in a world where the North creates knowledge and the South uses the knowledge. The South is now a creator of knowledge as important as the global North. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I agree with your first uh, comment about the uh, uh, the RTOs. Yes, the definition is critical and uh, because it's uh, quite varying. So uh, once you specify the criteria, say by uh, publicly funded research organization, would that be possible? Uh, yes, it would be possible. Absolutely. I would be happy to to take that offline with you if you want to to go over that. Or if yeah. Waitro has an interest in that. Yeah. If sure. need. We'll do. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Patrick, for also your question, and also Professor Vito to elaborating uh, his questions. Uh okay, I we still have uh quite some time. I will still invite somebody, uh participant from <laughs> the participant list. Is there any question from the uh, participant? If not, I still have a question, Professor Brito. Yeah, please. Uh, you know that research on SDG, uh, because you you also mentioned in your uh, presentation about low income countries and comparing with high income countries. So I want to hear about policy in El Safir. Yeah, about uh, the publication. Of course, we for to publish. We sometimes we we need uh, we we charge with APC, uh, article processing charge. You know that uh, sometimes mm -hmm. uh, if we if our study in the low income country and we study also in the low income country, sometimes we uh, have difficulties to publish <laughs> in the journal high reputable journal that charge quite high APC. Is there any regulations or, uh, you know, uh, policy in Sofia to tackle this issue? Uh, thank you very much for the question, Dr. Ashmat. Yes, there are. Uh, first, there is, until recently, we had a, a policy of offering a free, a full waiver of APCs for authors from low-income countries and partial waiver for authors from middle-income countries. And those are listed in a website which is called Research for Life. There are more than 80 countries that can uh, publish uh, with either full uh, waiver or partial waiver of the APC. And I'm sure that all low-income countries, according to the world, of bank definitions are entitled, authors are entitled to full uh, waiver. Now, starting in uh, January next year, so in a full, uh, few weeks, Elsevier has announced a pilot program to have uh, the APC value tagged to the value of the uh, per capita income of the country using purchase parity power. So that there will there is now a table of costs for APC which depends on the wealth of the country. Less uh, rich countries will pay a smaller APC. Richer countries will pay the full uh, value of the APC. This is also I, I I will get the link and, and I can put that in the in the chat here if you are interested in looking at those two. But there is it and this is a uh, an important, uh, an important, uh, relevant topic for us at Elsevier because we see that the global South is becoming more and more important in research in the world, and they must have access to to the best journals. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Professor Vito. Uh, I think now we have to end this session. Uh, thank you very much again uh, for all speakers in the first sessions. And for now, we have to maybe take about a 10 minute breaks. Uh, I will give uh, opportunity for you guys to grab some coffees and refresh yourself. 
and for Muslim because now in Indonesia is almost uh, asar prayer. Uh, so that's why I will give you about 10 minutes a break, uh, and then we come back at 15 past uh, 15. Okay, so it's okay. Okay, we'll we'll come back after 15 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Research is our strength to overcome any limitations. Innovation is the guiding vision that drives us towards the future. We cannot face this alone. We must stand together to make our vision a reality. Growing strong upon the land of Nusantara, a magical place filled with miracle and wonder. A land spanning two continents and two oceans, rich in culture and biodiversity. We and Indonesia are the necessary combination to realize the grand visions of the future. Like an orchestra, brain harmonizes research, development, assessment, application, and also synergies, invention and innovation in Indonesia. We created an ecosystem consisting of seven deputies, 12 research organizations, and 85 research centers dispersed throughout Indonesia. Research Organization for Aeronautics and Space. Research Organization for Nuclear Energy. Research Organization for Energy and Manufacture. Research Organization for Earth Sciences and Maritime. Research Organization for Life Sciences and Environment. 
Research Organization for Electronics and Informatics. Research Organization for Social Sciences and Humanities. Research Organization for Archaeology, Language, and Literature. Research Organization for Health. Research Organization for Nanotechnology and Material. Research Organization for Agriculture and Food. Research Organization for Governance, Economy, and Community Welfare. Bring catalyzing research and innovation to develop an advanced scientific ecosystem in Indonesia with two main targets. Green realizes the tremendous potential of the nation's youth in the field of science and technology. Thus, various research and innovation policies are being formulated to develop and cultivate human resources with high competence and aptitude in science and technology. Creating many excellent programs is a form of BRIN's commitment to researchers, innovators, and the general population from various disciplines across the nation. The research and innovation ecosystem quality improvement in Indonesia is also realized through the collaboration of various ministries, institutions, domestic industries, and regional governments, to name a few, by forming the Regional Research and Innovation Agency, or BRIDA. Moreover, cooperation with various foreign research institutions continue to be developed through active participation as member of various organizations and international forums. RIN organizes research into a more effective and efficient process by integrating human resources, infrastructure, and budget from various research and development institutions. Oriented by a national research priority, BRIN routinely enacts comprehensive evaluations from various research and development institutions. This effort is supported through the continued management and improvement of various research and innovation facilities located across 17 regions of Indonesia, dedicated towards the development of science and technology. Green continues to improve our contribution to research and innovation towards national development by developing and revitalizing four areas of science and technology, or KST, an integrated area consisting of research laboratory facilities, testing laboratories, and industrial facilities, or both startups and SMEs, tenant office rooms, co-working space, meeting rooms, gallery rooms, and other supporting facilities. the future of a golden Indonesia 2045 by consolidating science and technology resources and creating a resource ecosystem and research-based economical foundation. Transforming Indonesia as a global reference in the development and application of science and technology practices and the good of humankind. Nature is the source of inspiration. Knowledge is the foundation. And to be put in praxis for the sake of the nation.
Research is our strength to overcome any limitations. Innovation is the guiding vision that drives us towards the future. We cannot face this alone. We must stand together to make our vision a reality. Growing strong upon the land of Nusantara, a magical place filled with miracle and wonder. A land spanning two continents and two oceans, rich in culture and biodiversity. We and Indonesia are the necessary combination to realize the grand visions of the future. Like an orchestra, Brain harmonizes research, development, assessment, application, and also synergies, invention and innovation in Indonesia. We created an ecosystem consisting of seven deputies, 12 research organizations, and 85 research centers dispersed throughout Indonesia. Research Organization for Aeronautics and Space. Research Organization for Nuclear Energy. Research Organization for Energy and Manufacture. Research Organization for Earth Sciences and Maritime. Research Organization for Life Sciences and Environment. Research Organization for Electronics and Informatics. Research Organization for Social Sciences and Humanities. Research Organization for Archaeology, Language and Literature. Research Organization for Health. Research Organization for Nanotechnology and Material. Research Organization for Agriculture and Food. Research Organization for Governance, Economy and Community Welfare. Brin catalyzing research and innovation to develop an advanced scientific ecosystem in Indonesia with two main targets. Brin realizes the tremendous potential of the nation's youth in the field of science and technology. Thus, various research and innovation policies are being formulated to develop and cultivate human resources with high competence and aptitude in science and technology. Creating many excellent programs is a form of Brin's commitment to researchers, innovators, and the general population from various disciplines across the nation. The research and innovation ecosystem quality improvement in Indonesia is also realized through the collaboration of various ministries, institutions, domestic industries, and regional governments, to name a few, by forming the Regional Research and Innovation Agency, or BRIDA. Moreover, cooperation with various foreign research institutions continue to be developed through active participation as member of various organizations and international forums. Green organizes research into a more effective and efficient process by integrating human resources, infrastructure, and budget from various research and development institutions. Oriented by a national research priority, Brin routinely enacts comprehensive evaluations from various research and development institutions. This effort is supported through the continued management and improvement of various research and innovation facilities located across 17 regions of Indonesia, dedicated towards the development of science and technology. Green continues to improve our contribution to research and innovation towards national development by developing and revitalizing Okay.
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you uh, for again joining uh, this webinar and welcome back again to this webinar. <coughs> uh, we will start for the second uh, panel sessions. Uh, the theme of this uh, panel session is that uh, opportunities and challenges in implementing SDG2 from its region. So for the first, I would like to invite uh, Professor Julian Wefak. Uh, Professor Julian. Professor Julian. Yes, yes, moderator. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ya, yeah, Profesor Julian Wilfak, ya, yeah, si Esen Associate Professor yeah. in the Department of Biochemistry, Universita, University of Yaoundé, uh, One, Cameroon. Ya, yeah. <coughs> Profesor Julian, are you, are you ready? Oke, oke, so, oke, so, you have uh, 10 minutes for the next session, for this session, so, the floor is yours. You still have, I, I think you still have a problem with the voice. Yeah. Your voice. We cannot, we, we still cannot hear your voice clearly. Professor Julian. Halo. The camera, the camera. Oh ya, yeah. you you, you just uh, stop your camera and you can start your presentation. Oh, I think she she is out. Oh ya, yeah. oh ya, yeah. ya. Yeah. Oke, okay. you can start, Profesor Julian. Ya. Yeah. Yeah. Oke, okay, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Wedro family, thank you moderator for giving me the floor. Uh, we are uh, Julian and Bless, lecturer and researcher from University of uh, uh, Yaoundé One. Uh, Oke. Okay. We are Cameroonians. This is uh, Cameroon in Africa. And we would like to appreciate the invitation sent by Teresia to talk on behalf of Africa on opportunities and challenges in implementing SDG2 in Africa and fulfill the role of RT, African RTOs in achieving this goal. Uh, the is here. The outlines are here. First, what is SDG? Is it zero hunger? In fact, uh, SDG uh, the okay. The overall goal of SDG two is to end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture by 2030. This is in agenda of many organizations like United Organization Agenda 2030, African Union Agenda 2063, they are, they are taking their time, and Cameroonian National Development Strategy 2030. In fact, achieving SDG will require feeding more than 10 billion people expected to inhabit the planet by 2030. And the immediate target is to meet the basic food requirement of about 8 million hungry people today 
and to reduce the current level of malnutrition and undernourished in children. The most of these live in Africa and a few in other developing regions like Asia and Latin America and Caraïbes. Uh, then what are the targets and instruments to achieve our SDG2? For the target, the first is to ensure access to safe, nutritious, and sufficient food all around the years. Here you have the figures of uh, the prevalence of undernourished in total population in Central Africa. And the, the figures are really uh, uh, uh, high of, uh, of un undernourished and impoverished. 40% in 2020 in the Central African Republic, the highest level. Still under uh, this food insecurity, we have high prevalence, uh, we have the prevalence of moderate or severe food insecurity in, 2000, in 2022, which range from 62% in Cameroon to 83% in IT, and the prevalence of severe food insecurity, which was 60% in Rwanda and 43% in the Democratic Republic of Congo. These are really very alarming figures. And in Cameroon especially, over 55% live in poverty, which affects several aspects of their life from education, living condition, and work, among others. 38% uh, of people are severely impoverished, and the incidence of poverty is particularly high in the rural part of the northern and eastern regions, where structural underdevelopment and recurring climatic shocks, including flood and prolonged dry spell, limit people's ability to strive. The second target of our SDG is uh, to end all forms of malnutrition. And now the malnutrition is really present in Africa and you have fun of malnutrition and the figures are really high, ranging from 20 to 30% in Africa, and in the entire Africa. The third target is to double the agricultural productivity and income of small food producers, and finally ensure sustainable food production systems and implement resilient agricultural practices. Here are some figures of the agricultural land in Cameroon. Uh, agricultural land represents 20% of the total land area of Cameroon. And uh, um, the arable land represents 30% of the total land area. And the, the, the, the agriculture contribute for 20% GDP in Cameroon. And the food production index in 2011 was uh, 150. Uh, the food export is only 40% and food import 25%. Also, um, the, the agricultural population of Cameroon represents 37% of the total population. And uh, the total economic activity population in agriculture is about 42%. And women represent 47% of the 42% of the economic active population. Now, what are the instruments to achieve our SDG? We should increase investment, enhance international cooperation, agricultural research and extension services, technology development plant and livestock gen bank. 
We should correct and prevent trade restriction and distortion in world agricultural markets, and then adopt measures to ensure the proper functioning of food commodity market. Uh, now, what are the role of African RTOs in achieving SDG 2? First, all the uh, SDG 2 targets and instruments require the active participation and leadership role of RTOs and other technology organizations. Specific areas of action will include education and skill development, for youth and women, for example, entrepreneurship and supporting sustainable food value chain, advising on appropriate policies and strategies at Pan-African, regional and national level, developing technologies and innovation, including digital technology and those for managing climate change impacts. Uh, this is a case study, uh, my team work over 20 decades on organic agriculture, and these are briefly some highlight main results. We have shown that uh, organic agriculture uh, increased the agronomic parameters and the proximate composition of fruit and grain produce. As example, you have hill and trees of the crop, which range from 20 to 400%. That means that we could multiply by four the yield of the production, covering, covering the, the target of doubling the allowing more transformation and more exploitation. We also improve the organolytic and biological property, and these are the content in uh, uh, the, the, the improvement in the metab primary metabolic content, especially on, in uh, vegetable fruits. And also we reduce the, the, the water content that leads to long, long storage shelf lives which in, would increase from 40 to 130 days at four degrees Celsius. And these are very important indicator to export uh, food stuff even abroad. I mean that if it can take two months, it will not rot. So it's, well, it's very, very good indicator of improving the quality of organic food. Uh, how WECRO can help RTO, Africa SEO to achieve SDG2? Um, WECRO uh, has so far launched a number of capacity building programs to exchange best practices in agricultural and food technologies and innovation. And we really appreciate and, and, uh, and wish that it's Wetro continue in that line. Uh, Wetro has put to our disposal a platform for exchange and develop our project, Saira. Dr. Barrow talked about it very well in his introduction. And um, from that platform, Saira, we, uh, we, we, we, we, we were able to secure one European project, soy guard project, uh, which, which, which, uh, which is uh, on the third year this year. And uh, in fact, soy guard project aim at uh, uh, protecting soy using organic method and we compare conventional uh, approach to, to organic under uh, three uh, land degradation, uh, low, middle, and high degradation zone, uh, degradation soil. And the overall trend of the result, from the overall trend, uh, soil is recommending EU 
to go for more than 50% organic agriculture to maximize multifunctionality and biodiversity of soil. And this is from uh, this. Pardon, uh, Professor Julian, could you speed up your talk? You, uh? you, yes. Could you speed up, speed up your talk? Maybe you need, you have one more minute. Okay, okay. This is the example of the result who uh, encourage okay. to promote green agriculture. Uh, wait to uh, uh, enhance the possibility of wait to member to raise uh, research funding from other national and international sources like this project. Encourage sharing result, uh, sharing of re uh, research uh, infrastructure among LTOs, especially between develop and developing country. Like we are in contact, we bring to put on uh, to, to to put on a research a, a, a joint research project and mobility. Okay, so thank you for your kind attention. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Professor Julian, for uh, your uh, nice, uh, excellent talk, sharing your experience on implementing uh, yeah. research opportunity in the SDG two, particularly in your country, Cameroon. Thank you so much. Uh, we come to the second speaker. I will invite uh, Mr. Al Muayyid Asayid. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You already with me. Okay. Yeah, I will introduce uh, briefly about you, uh, uh, Dr. Asayed. Uh, he is the director of Royal Society in the Kingdom of Jordan. Okay, thank you, Dr. Asayed. Uh, you have about 10 minutes to uh, deliver your talks. Thank you. Okay, uh, so I'm... Um... Okay, I'm not you seeing myself. Do you, see, do you see myself? Not yet, not yet. Hmm. Uh, though my, the video is on, but it seems there's, I don't know why the, uh, the photo is not coming up. So anyway, okay, we still, so no problem. We still... Don't see, that doesn't see the. Your okay, slide. so I I'll, I'll, sh I'll share my screen now. Uh, please click on the share screen. Okay. Uh, okay. You see yeah. my screen? It's already. Already okay. seen your screen. Okay, perfect. So thank you so much. My name is Al Moyed Al Sayed. I am the director of Water Environment and Climate Change Center at Royal Scientific Society. And uh, in fact, I've, I've been asked to talk about this topic, uh, which is opportunities and challenges in implementing SDG2 from the perspective of MENA country. So MENA is Middle East and North Africa region. And uh, before getting started uh, in this topic, just wanted to, uh, to talk a little bit about uh, to talk a little bit about my organization, Royal Scientific Society. So it is, it is the largest applied research institution in Jordan. It is independent, non-governmental, multidisciplinary science-based organization. It was founded in 1970 uh, uh, as, uh, you know, for, for providing uh, uh, services, scientific services, consultations, uh, and uh, uh, uh, applied and fundamental research for the government, for the private sector, as well as for the local community. Uh, I am, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, uh, yeah, this is uh, like just just uh, quick numbers. Uh, RSS uh, has more than 350 researchers and technical staff working in all disciplines, as I mentioned. Uh, uh, we have uh, almost uh, 600 employees. Uh, we have uh, 44 accredited, accredited laboratories testing uh, all kinds of materials, uh, all kinds of goods. Uh, we test the water, air, food, textile, all things. Um, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, we provide training uh, training courses and capacity building programs uh, for all groups of the uh, communities, uh, uh, uh, either in Jordan or, or uh, worldwide. Uh, uh, this is my center, uh, Water Environment and the Climate Change. Uh, 
center is part of uh, uh, what we call it a sustainable solution sector. And sustainable solution sector uh, at RSS uh, consists of three centers. The first one is water, environment, and the climate change center, which I'm, I'm, I'm supervising. Uh, uh, the second center is uh, energy, national energy research center. And the third center is uh, building research center. So all of which they come together to, uh, to uh, formulate uh, what we call it sustainable solutions uh, uh, sector. Uh, this is my center. In fact, it uh, it uh, includes uh, six divisions. Uh, the first one, uh, water service division, where we uh, uh, do like water tests and water treatment and water reuse. Air service division, uh, monitoring air across Jordan and doing uh, uh, like uh, air dispersion modeling and and so on. Environmental service division, working on uh, life cycle assessment and circular economy. Uh, climate change service division working on adaptation and mitigation uh, projects, and we have what we call it Imarco division, which is which is basically uh, doing monitor uh, uh, monitoring water uh, uh, on real time basis using the last definitely and biodiversity division, which uh, uh, in fact uh, uh, uh, you know uh, works on. Uh, uh, and biodiversity and sustainable uh, practices. So, without any further ado, just uh, to go through uh, SDG two, I, I believe that we've uh, gone through the indicators of uh, SDG two. SDG two uh, has five main indicators. Uh, the first indicator, just going through these indicators very quickly, uh, which is about accessibility. So, by twenty thirty, in hunger and ensure access by all people, in particular the poor and people in vulnerable situations. So it is, in one word, it is accessibility. Uh, the, second, the second indicator is by 2030, uh, end all forms of malnutrition, including achieving by 2025 international aid targets on stunting and uh, uh, wasting uh, uh, in children under five years uh, uh, age old and uh, women anemia as well. Uh, and we, we, this is what, what, what we call uh, utilization. So uh, we have, in fact, we have like uh, uh, four more indicator, four main indicators. Uh, the first one is accessibility. The second one is uh, utilization. The third one is availability, uh, which is by 2030, double the agricultural production, productivity and income of small scale food producers. Uh, so it is uh, basically, uh, in one word, it is availability. Um, the fourth indicator is to ensure sustainable food production systems uh, and implement what we call it resilient agricultural practices that increase productivity and production. This is what we call it stability. Uh, so, uh, four basically, there are four main indicators uh, uh, that we can summarize them in four words uh, availability, accessibility, utilization, and stability. Uh, the, the fifth indicator. Uh, which is maintain the genetic diversity of seeds, cultivated plants, and farmed and uh, domesticated, uh, domesticated plants uh, and their related wild species. Uh, zooming in to the MENA countries, uh, in fact, most of the MENA countries, they are lagging behind. And uh, I would say that none of the MENA countries uh, has reached uh, uh, like uh, uh, has achieved the SDG2. Uh, red circle means uh, that this country uh, uh, is encountering major challenges uh, to achieve SDG2. So this is the current status. Uh, so uh, we are, uh, we are uh, lagging behind. We need to put uh, significant efforts in order to overcome the significant challenges. Uh, once again, uh, you see the the, the food uh, the households who are who are suffering from uh, insecure situation are getting increased uh, by time uh, in, in in MENA countries. So uh, and and I think uh, I think it is it is quite imperative uh, to mention what's going on at the moment in Gaza. Uh, so the genocide in Gaza, the the the, the starvation. Uh, and uh, you know, there's no food. Uh, bombing bakeries, and uh, and you know, the the the the the 
the the lack of food now in Gaza is is in, at alarming stage, uh, and uh, and this is you know Gaza is one of the MENA countries, and we need in fact to pay attention to this. Uh, so now, uh, main challenges. Uh, so the main challenges, uh, in fact, in MENA countries, and I think this is quite common in other in other in other region. Uh, so uh, we're talking about climate change, population growth. Uh, biodiversity loss, land degradation, uh, water scarcity, limited access to technology, uh, uh, political conflicts, as I mentioned earlier, trade barriers and market access. And if we, if we like uh, pick up uh, uh, one by one, if you say like climate change, if like, climate change it uh, affects uh, the food systems uh, because of the frequency of extreme weather and higher temperatures, uh, um, and the water stress. Half, half of the population of MENA, in fact, they are uh, uh, facing water stress. Um, and uh, with the population expected to grow to nearly 700 million in, to, uh, uh, in 2050, per capita uh, availability is uh, going to be half. Uh, population growth rate. Uh, so the MENA countries is one of the, uh, of, of the, of the countries that the population is increasing uh, either in uh, you know normal way or in uh, abnormal way because of the migration and and so on. Uh, depend on food imports. Uh, so most of the MENA countries they are importing food from outside, and this is in fact uh, uh, putting the situation uh, in, in in in the whole MENA country in you know in a vulnerable uh, conditions. So. Uh, so um, uh, it, you know it, it's subject to uh, price volatility and and uh, fluctuation. Uh, land degradation. So most of the uh, um, uh, uh, lands in, in in the region uh, are uh, uh, you know uh, uh, being degraded. So the land degradation is is up to seventy percent now in MENA countries. And conflicts, as I mentioned, so conflicts uh, are are affecting the food supply chain. Are affecting the uh, you know, uh, affecting the the nutrition and and and so on, and uh, Gaza is one of the uh, examples. So these are the main challenges that are facing MENA region uh, to achieve SDG two. So, how can we address these challenges? So, in terms of population growth, uh, so uh, it is it is quite important to think of. Uh, some innovative uh, agricultural uh, food systems, such as intensive farming or vertical farming, or what we call it urban agriculture. Uh, and in terms of climate change, so we need to think of uh, climate smart agriculture uh, using some some some sort of uh, new technologies, uh, industry 4.0 technologies, uh, to uh, to uh, uh, farm efficiently. Uh, land degradation, uh, we need to apply sustainable land management practices, uh, um, and we need to uh, to apply the principles of what we call it land degradation neutrality. And uh, I would say I would say that MENA can, some of the MENA countries, they are progressing well in terms of uh, applying uh, a climate smart agriculture and land degradation neutrality. For example, uh, Jordan is one of the uh, countries that has started applying uh, land degradation neutrality and uh, uh, has uh, has developed a new uh, strategy for food security and smart agriculture. Uh, for water scarcity, we have to uh, uh, to think of smart irrigation, efficient irrigation, and uh, to uh, uh, to utilize non-conventional water resources. Of course, by biodiversity loss, uh, we need to uh, to come up come up with strategies uh, uh, to protect species. And uh, avoid uh, any loss of biodiversity. And for polit political uh, conflicts, I think we need to. Uh, I don't have any any. I would say uh, solutions. For this. Uh, this is something that we need to. You, you, st you still have one more minute. Could you I, speak? I, I, I've completed anyway. So so uh, that's all. Uh, this is just a quick photos from uh, what we are doing at RSS. We're um, developing some indoor farming systems. Uh, so uh, we are developing uh, uh, like um, um, vertical farming systems using uh, some some uh, LED lights uh, spectrum, uh, and we've developed uh, what we call the green wall. 
uh, that can be uh, established uh, uh, inside houses and small flats uh, for food production. Uh, and we're uh, uh, we're working uh, as well with local communities and poor urban communities to uh, plant rooftops using hydroponic and vertical farming. Uh, and we've uh, we've been using uh, natural based solutions for wastewater treatment and reuse. Uh, in order to improve uh, the water efficiency and the treated water is being used for irrigation. Uh, that's all from my side, and thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Asayed, who has um, sharing with us uh, many things, yeah, particularly because, you know, yeah, Jordan also, most of Middle East countries are uh, water scarce area. So it's quite challenging uh, to provide food for for the community. Thank you uh, so much, Dr. Asayed. So thank you. Uh, now we we come to the third speaker. <clears throat> uh, I will invite uh, Dr. Puji Lestari. Uh, she is our chairman, the research organization uh, for agriculture and food. <clears throat> Ibu Puji, for the next uh, ten minutes, uh, the time is yours. Yeah. Thank you, Pak. Ahmad, yes. I hope that you you are hearing my voice. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good morning, good afternoon, everyone. It's my honor to take a part in this uh, webinar. So I will try to deliver a talk about the research and how how to make it. Yes, perfect. Yes, click yes, okay. the slide. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. So the presentation that I would like to talk is uh, I just I try to address on the research innovation to reduce zero hunger in Indonesia, especially to face uh, challenges in implementation of SDG two, similar to other speaker who is on the region. So my name is Pichin Stavi, uh, it's a team. So now I am responsible to research and innovation for agriculture and food. So if on the issue of SDG2, actually there are a lot of challenges, actually uh, how a lot of people uh, in the world has no enough food as also Show by Asaya, you who will make me <laughs> my tears drop. Actually, I pray every day for, for the conflict, so I always pray there's no more conflict in the region. So, the second one is uh, there's a lot of uh, high food loss and waste. It's due to food distribution, the uh, long distance, also uneven distribution of the food. Set. So, it's also affect on the dietary habit and food vulnerability. So, it is. In Indonesia, it's really considered as the second largest of country which has food loss and waste. The other challenges are extreme weather. So here in Indonesia, for example, actually, we have uh, this anomaly uh, climates for especially like Lanina, and you know, this come more frequently. Uh, so with the flooding, throughout and others uh, conditions can impact to the agricultural production, so a lot of pests and disease attack, and also the abiotic abiotic stress. Also, some of those challenges is conversion of agricultural land to other purpose. It's in Indonesia, it comes um, a year more than 100,000 hectares. So also malnutrition, especially zinc, iron deficiency, so under the race, other nourished vitamin A. With that, uh, challenges so how we try to uh, increase the hunger with the easy way to assess safe and nutritious and sufficient food okay. and also second how to increase productivity it's really how to double the productivity and others and also we have opportunity to increase the uh, food uh, production to ensure the sustainably food production system also the implementation, especially the relation resilience agriculture. 
with the climate change. And of course, it's very important to end the malnutrition. And here is the stunting and malnutrition we are still uh, facing in Indonesia, as mentioned by uh, uh, Ms. Ajin. So this is very uh, important in Indonesia, how we can maximize the opportunity with the uh, potential in Indonesia. How to go next? Like this. Sorry, Pak Ahmad, yeah. how to... You just click, oh. the, click the slide, maybe. Oh. You haven't clicked. You... Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so next is also, we have a lot of genetic resources, local genetic resources, so not only the genetic resources, but also the human resources technology, also finance is very important. This is, and maximize all of these, the resources to support the, uh, SDG2. This is important to strengthen food sustainability through the utilization of potential reductions. And with the potential, how we can also increase it and enhance the economic enterprises. With the key to convert potential enterprises here, there is a, a complement which are to be in sustainability management so the health. So really here is a one, the only one the government raises the IGS is that works. Uh, challenges. So, more of a impact on the ground, so like the agriculture production in Indonesia is still uh, with the problem. For example, for food crops and horticulture production, also seed crops and livestock, some of them are in decline. But even especially, but for horticulture crops, is still uh, and seed crops is still safe. But for others, we need. Uh, so we see a specific crisis and inflation. If you consider uh, several, maybe like last year or several three years ago, the COVID pandemic occurred. So this uh, average farmer term of trade decline in all commodity sub sectors, but here except state crops. So this right here, you can we should identify what kind of crops, what kind of commodity that can support or reduce the uh, zero hunger. So here, just I would like to identify you with our team, uh, research and innovation to which closely relevant to reduce zero hunger. We have six research centers, food technology and processing, agro-industry, food technology, food crops, horticulture and research crops, and animal husbandry. These six research centers are synergized and complement each other to uh, the output of research can be uh, the outcome, I mean, the high outcome to an impact not only the scientific but also the is that the recognition of the, of the science will also impact to the community. That's why both on the based on the uh, step the indicator of seeds to actually the in Indonesia the National Development Planning Agency have like, the Exit plan. So we just try to implement it for this. So our research also focus on the prioritized communities, that rice, maize, and others. How we try to develop new variety with sporting technologies is, is for uh, instruments. It's uh, developed in 2026. And we have more other roadmap that can support this SDG too. And for this work, we have collaborated not only in the of the SD. So as an example, in the food crops, we try to improve the genetic uh, of these crops for like rice, corn, soybeans, so the rice, especially how to uh, support this, uh, I mean, the zero hunger. So it's kind of rice with the high bedroom zinc, also golden rice, also this right you should have more victorian to and build that stress with high and technology also applied with a lot of stakeholder in national another example about polysmolary here we try to produce kind of healthy food with noodle and in addition to that we try also uh, produce uh, uh, any food crops like golden rice is uh, made vitamin A and rice in some soap with high vitamin Z, pigmented in rice, low glycemic, also other food, because and by product utilization with the uh, approach 
that are uh, conducted by one of the center and the center for crops. It's also support for management and post harvesting technology. And it's, just, it's not the example is horticultural feeding crops. This focus on like chili pepper, salad, garlic, potato, and focus on the how to increase the productivity with additional uh, desired trait like tolerant to drought or other virus, other uh, disease. The super technology, not only the conventional breeding, but also another modern breeding. We also apply the genome editing, also micro assisted in other genomic uh, assisted breeding as well. So, another identified uh, research and technology in green is the other one is garlic, onion, and potato also citrus. System. So, approach have been applied here, for example, so just with the genetic how this increase the genetic of the truth, as it to along and also the other calligraphic, as I mentioned, with the high yield, that you also have to take a the pieces. And also, we apply the technology for affordable and cultural input. Sorry, this is in Boston. This is just, I would like to show that we on onion also another crops, especially horticultural crops in Indonesia, also for example, with this uh, approach of the sustainable system can support and the, it's the yield of these crops. It's the other that's maybe just briefly I try to mention. We have also in Indonesia because we have a lot of oil palm production and over the 16 million Indonesia, how we max, maximize their potency here. It's a kind of chrome propagation of the palm. We have technology also cocoa, how we try to develop a new variety, also including the other technology to support the or how to improve the cell quality and overcome trusts on cocoa. And here this uh, with the technology and characterization and selection on that food is also the source in Indonesia. We try to how this source of carbohydrate can be used to, to uh, reduce the zero hunger. And this is uh, for livestock here. We have also because it's under one of the center, we have a lot of local uh, genetic research on livestock. For example, cattle, goat, sheep, and it's adapted in tropical climate and high level efficiency to work with the resources with the, with the integrated technology, like how to develop forage crop variety and also the reproduction technology with the feeding technology. Also, we focus on the animal health and so the model integration between cattle and oil farm to have the mutual benefit for those uh, kind of plant and uh, cattle. So this is also one of and some of the technology that can uh, increase or boost the the needs uh, self-sufficiency, especially it's the other such as example how it's also the agro-industry to support SDG2 with the overall genetic resources. For example, here from Hong, also from Sago, Sahoy, and then in Indonesia, we can use this for uh, so the arithmetic to substitute or from wheat because they import it a lot. And then how this citrus peel essential can be a demand for well, and then also how this palm oil based sincere can be used for the improvement step. The most I mean, abundant commodity that as a part of diversification before. So I mean, it's still the, with the high biodiversity in Indonesia, the genetic resources, as the local genetic resources, diversification is very important. So also here, how is the yogurt product and others? Not only from plant or also, but we also export from the med, like city. The others, such as in China, the, the, the, like, the cocoa or other technology from Sago and other product, especially focus not only on food, uh, except, but also how we maximize the energy for uh, cell life. It's important to say not to the as a particularly high food loss and it's on the extended cell life or some of these products.
here is some technology, is the other part. Here with technology, how the thermal processing, handling technology, register making, fermentation technology. Uh, so far, approach you how we can do food preservation, active packaging, also food and beverage processes. So, uh, uh, technique here we can try to and we hope this uh, technology could extend uh, the survival and how to add because it's very uh, very safe, very safe for the uh, crops. So it's very important how we can extend this. This for our future. Now in this time, actually we have collaboration with the national agency. So as a part of this program, and so uh, yes, would you could you speed up the speed up your yeah. presentation yeah it's various packaging for technology for our approach as well how we can uh have this uh more I mean, safe but also it's because for distribution this food indonesia we have a lot of islands so how we can also display and be uh more effective so based on the, the identified technology and research innovation and the bring especially in the sector of culture and food. So what we would like to propose is how this is collaboration, of course. The collaboration is not only on research, but also how um, to in the capacity building in the from human for human resources also on the research itself and how we uh, can promote the sustainable practices also with inclusive solution with the developing research solution that promotes small scale farmers. So based on that it's a even broad Topic we try to propose that the uh, collaboration for research, but we can make priority what kind of uh, crops and what kind of desired traits on the top, especially, especially for gene development or any important crops for production and quality in this of the resources. Also, how to overcome some malnutrition with the gene crop improvement, and then also how to uh, develop new variety. Present to build up with stress and sustainable productivity and environmental friendly with also any research question to increase value, especially for sustainability, uh, culture and how to reduce food loss with the medical staff resources. I think that's all of my presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ibu Puji, who has been delivering a uh, very excellent talk. Uh, how to maximize uh, potential local agricultural commodity to gain economical values. Also, she shared uh, a risk program in uh, our risk organizations, and she also uh, shared the proposed collaboration tech topics that maybe we want to collaborate with in the in the future. Uh, thank you, Bubuji. <clears throat> uh, last uh, speaker, I will invite uh, Miss Irene. Punti Padros. Is Irene? Yes. Oh yeah, you already with us? Okay. She is a business uh, development manager in circular and bioeconomy. She will deliver uh, her talk regarding the international collaborations within Horizon Europe. Uh, Ms. Irene, uh, for the next 10 minutes, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. So I will try to share my screen. Yeah. Perfect. Are you right. seeing? Oh. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Uh, so my talk is about uh, possibilities uh, for international collaboration within uh, Horizon Europe. Um, first, uh, please let me briefly introduce uh, LATAT. Uh, LATAT is a technology center established in uh, 1906. And we are uh, located uh, in the area of uh, Barcelona and it's a multi-sector um, technology center. So we work in health and biomedicine, digital industry, circular economy and uh, decarbonization, 
applied chemistry and, and materials and um, advancing uh, technological sen uh, services for different industrial sectors. And as you can see, we are located around uh, Barcelona and we have uh, several uh, centers. So just to explain, I, I imagine that uh, most of you uh, know about uh, Horizon Europe and are uh, familiar with it, but just in case I wanted to make a brief introduction. So what is Horizon Europe? Uh, Horizon Europe is the main R&D program within the European Union, and it's focused on promoting a collaborative R&D uh, between different types of organizations, such as university, technology centers, uh, industry, SMEs, and other organizations like um, agricultural uh, um, producers like uh, cooperatives or hospitals uh, and, uh, and others. And uh, the main focus is to promote the collaboration between different uh, uh, member states of the European Union, okay? So uh, for each project, um, each project has a consortium uh, including between eight to 20 partners because there are projects with different sizes and from uh, these partners are from between six to 10 uh, mem EU member states, more or less. Uh, there are also associated uh, countries um, which are not part of the European Union, but have an agreement with the European Union that they will fund also uh, the activities under this program. But beyond that, it is also possible sometimes that other uh, organizations from other countries uh, can be eligible for funding. Uh, but this is uh, in the cases where the topic, uh, so the, the calls are called topics, uh, request international collaboration. When a topic says international collaboration is encouraged, it means uh, collaboration beyond uh, EU or the associated uh, member states. So uh, looking at this is the structure of uh, Horizon Europe. If we leave aside the programs on defense and fusion and so on, uh, we have these three pillars. The uh, excellent science, this is very academic. Uh, and then there is the part of a pillar three of innovative uh, Europe. So we, for now we will forget about those. And we will center on a uh, pillar two, uh, which are the it's focused on the global challenges and European industrial competitiveness, and this is uh, focused on bringing technologies that have uh, shown uh, good results in the lab and bringing them to the market. And within pillar two, we have different clusters uh, with a uh, different uh, thematic focus. So, for instance health, uh, culture, creativity, and so on. And uh, the most interesting for today's talk is cluster six uh, that you can see uh, highlighted with a red arrow, which is on uh, the food, bioeconomy, natural resources, agriculture, and environment. Okay, so this in principle is the one that I think that would be of interest uh, for you. Then, how to join uh, Horizon Europe uh, Consortium as an international partner. The most, let's say, usual way to join is that the concept and initial consortium uh, will be developed by uh, partners within the European Union, and then you will be invited, okay? And uh, the way that uh, the type of role expected of international par partners, uh, there are two types of roles, mainly. And the, there can be other cases, but generally the two types of roles are either to replicate what is being done in, uh, the, the, in the project, okay? So for instance, uh, there is a, a technology developed and this is then replicated in uh, other countries beyond the EU. Or uh, let's say in this way, you are going from the EU out. Or if, uh, 
for the purposes of uh, that uh, topic and that project, there is interest in bringing in to the EU uh, unique natural or cultural resources from beyond the EU. Okay, and I will give uh, a couple of uh, examples later. And uh, one thing to bear in mind is that, let's say this is a program funded by the EU. So the idea is that the intellectual property and the commercial exploitation will remain uh, with European companies. So it's much easier to bring in uh, universities or non-profit organizations or so on uh, than international companies, okay? So uh, this is uh, an example of collaboration uh, with one uh, project uh, coordinated uh, by Leitart, which is uh, uh, Soilgard. And uh, in this case, we have, it, it's, it's a project dedicated uh, to looking at uh, soil microbiome and how uh, this um, respond in, in, in agricultural sites and how this is affected by stressors such as climate change, okay? So uh, in this case, there was one of the sites was in Thailand, and this is an example, okay, of this international co collaboration uh, of having these different uh, natural habitats uh, with rice plantations, which maybe uh, are different from rice plantations within the EU. So this is the kind of, uh, let's say, uh, different uh, natural resource outside the EU and also kind of replication. And there can be other cases, for instance, with um, alternative proteins that focus on uh, insect proteins. This is something that within the EU is not so normal. Uh, in many countries around the, the world, it's uh, completely uh, part of the culture and the gastronomy to eat insects. So this is something that is also a potential way to collaborate, for instance, or I don't know. Other possibilities were uh, what the international uh, partner could bring is not found within the EU. This is the kind of uh, thing that is often uh, looked for in an international partner. So not, let's say, uh, incorporating capabilities that would already be uh, present uh, within the EU. Okay, so uh, with regards to upcoming opportunities, uh, I am afraid that uh, now it's not the best time to look for uh, opportunities because we are at the end of the 2023-2024 uh, period and most uh, cluster six calls are coming to an end. The, the deadline is very close, so it's very, very difficult to uh, join a consortium at this stage because they are too advanced, okay? There could be uh, some opportunities within the mission soil that will close in September. Uh, these uh, mission soil topics are not published yet, but we have some titles. So for instance, uh, this uh, mission soil topic, soil health pollinators and key ecosystem functions is asking for international collaborations. And also there is one of uh, assessment of soil health in Africa. I think the title speaks for itself. So this could be two, two uh, opportunities uh, to collaborate. And uh, then uh, we will know more about the topics for um, 2025, but it, we don't know more at present. But uh, we know that uh, with the strategic uh, plan for 2025-2027, which is a public document, uh, in the uh, gap analysis for cluster six, we have uh, this gap identified in terms of international collaboration, that there is a need to foster this international collaboration 
which is important for the geopolitical dimension in cross-cutting areas such as food production, water management, organic production, soil health, biodiversity, urban farming, forestry, rural, rural areas, and development of digital skills. So let's say we can expect that for the 2025 topics that will be coming, there will be more topics asking for international uh, collaboration. Then uh, how can you identify topics that uh, ask for international collaboration? There are uh, two ways, okay? Uh, well, first of all, the topics need to be published. So sometimes there is some previous information, information running around, but it's supposed to be confidential and, and everything. Uh, but there are some drafts sometimes running around. But then once it is published, uh, to me, the easiest way to do it is uh, here I put the link for the uh, work programs of 2023 and 2024. To me, the easiest is to download that and just word search for international collaboration or just put international and you will find. Okay, to me, that's the easiest way. You can also go to um, the portal, the funding and tenders portal, and, and search for the different uh, topics. But I would say this is, at least to me, <laughs> the easiest is to download the document as a PDF and just just search. Okay, and, and, and it's, let's say, the, the, the, to me, the, the information is easier to see uh, as a document that in, in, in the funding and tenders portal. Okay, and, and, and that's that's uh, basically my uh, presentation. I'm, I'm sorry that it's not a better time that uh, we can identify a high number of uh, opportunities, but the message is the opportunities are coming. And from like that, we have previous experiences of collaborating uh, with uh, international partners that have gone very well. And uh, we hope that in the future, there will be new chances uh, to collaborate. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Irens, who has sharing with us regarding many opportunities to do research collaborations under the horizon of Europe or like that. Thank you so much. Thank okay, you. ladies and gentlemen, uh, we come to the uh, QA sessions for the second uh, panel discussions. I will give opportunity for all participants to uh, deliver uh, his questions. If you have question, uh, kindly raise your hand. Oh, we have a question in the chat box. <clears throat> I will read the question. Uh, first question is from uh, Dr. Yiyi Sulaiman. <clears throat> uh, his questions delivered to Dr. Asayid. <clears throat> uh, he said, uh, I work on climate smart agriculture or CSA in Indonesia. Uh, the question is that <clears throat> how in the advance of CSA, CSA in Jordan. Well, thank you so much for the question. Do you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Okay, perfect. So, uh, so um, I would say there are uh, there are some initiatives that are uh, being conducted uh, and that have been conducted uh, uh, under the umbrella of a, a smart agriculture or climate resilient agriculture. Uh, but uh, in fact, uh, uh, it is still not in a large scale. So uh, we have some initiatives. For example, um, uh, we've uh, we've used, for example, uh, some uh, some uh, innovative tools uh, that are resilient uh, for, uh, or innovative tools for irrigation. Sorry, that are resilient to climate. Uh, we have, uh, for example, uh, we've been using. Uh, some sort of uh, composting uh, of uh, of uh, 
uh, of agricultural waste uh, and uh, use uh, uh, these compost uh, as fertilizers. There are some initiatives uh, uh, here and there, uh, uh, but as I mentioned, it is not that common. Uh, however, uh, the Jordan government, they have realized the importance of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, climate resilient agriculture. And that's why, as I mentioned in my presentation, uh, we have uh, integrated this concept in most of the strategies that have been developed so far. We have developed food security strategy, which is quite unique uh, in the region. Uh, and in this strategy, uh, the, con the, the concept of climate resilient ag agriculture is, uh, is quite clear and it is mentioned in many parts. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Asayed. Uh, very clear uh, answer. <clears throat> uh, next, I will give opportunity to participant who raise uh, hand in, in, in this uh, Zoom. Uh, we have uh, Ms. Teresia Ningsia Stuti, the host of this event. Please, Bu Teresia. Yeah, thank you, Pak Ahmad. Uh, my question is uh, for uh, Ms. Irene. Um, in the project collaboration, let's say we collaboration with EU, uh, with EU fan funding and also organization from EU, let's say BRIN, uh, collaborate with uh, LETAD. And how about the intellectual property? Uh, right it is possible to join uh ownership or we just uh, as a inventor because uh, i see in the uh, presentation uh, ip and commercialization must be remain uh, in eu thank you yeah. okay okay thank yes. you please Ms. yes so uh the the rules of uh, horizon europe uh, state that uh, intellectual property belongs to the partner that generated it, okay? So, um, for instance, if a university from a country outside of the European Union generates uh, results that lead to a patent, that patent will belong to that university, okay? Uh, the thing is that, let's say, generally within one of these consortiums, you have like the whole value chain. So maybe you have uh, research performing organizations like universities and technology centers and so on. And then you have, for instance, a company. So the idea uh, that it has to exp be explained is that if there are um, results that could be commercially exploited. So the idea would be that these uh, universities would license the patent to this company and then they would exploit it. Okay, and, and, the, and, the, and then the, the, the universities and research centers would receive um, the, the royalties or different payments for the exploitation by this company. Okay, so definitely uh, international partners can benefit uh, economically, okay, out of the IP. But the idea is that if a project is um, focused in a way that, that the commercial exploitation would be done by uh, companies outside the EU, this is very difficult that it will be funded because this is funded by EU taxes. Okay, so we need to find a way that the international partners are bringing in unique value and that everyone wins, but in the end, the European Union is paying. So the value, most of the value should remain within the EU. It's also possible that uh, the companies will be, um, for instance, that the companies will be multinational companies that could have sites in the two countries. So there are many options. There are many options. But um, just to say that uh, it has to be um, constructed in a way that everyone wins, but 
since the EU is paying, uh, the EU sees uh, that they will be gaining a lot of value. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. You want clarification again, uh, Butres? Yeah, no. Okay. Thank you, uh, Miss Iren. <clears throat> uh, we have another uh, question in the chat box. I think <clears throat> this question is for Professor Julians, uh, and then Dr. Asayid, and also Ibu Puji. <clears throat> uh, uh, he wants a response about um, water management because uh, <clears throat> you know. Water is quite important. It's very important in agriculture. Uh, he want to share. He want you to share uh, the experience for each regions how to manage the water problem uh, for uh, or to handle these water problems so we can avoid uh, geopolitical conflicts regarding uh, the this this this uh, pro this uh, water problem. Uh, first chance I will give to uh, Professor Julian. Professor Julian, are you with me? Committee, can you? Yes. Text? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Could you respond to the the question? The management of water problem in in the field. Yeah. Could, could you share maybe your experience in in Cameroon? Uh, in Cameroon, uh, sometimes uh, I mean when you have drought, definitely you have you see uh, the field which are the plants are dry. It's total losses. So here uh, we haven't got the solution for the, the problem. When the, the drought is there, it's a total losses of the of the culture. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay. Okay. Okay, Professor Julian. Yeah, I say it's common problem actually for for Africa, I guess. Okay. For for Doctor Asaid, could you respond? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, this is, is this is important question. Uh, and as you know, seventy percent of uh, of freshwater resources are being directed to uh, agriculture, uh, and this percentage is worldwide. Uh, and uh, I think managing managing water resources is is crucial uh, to achieve food security. Um, in uh, in Jordan and across MENA country, I would say uh, wastewater reuse is one of the strategic water resources that we rely on uh, to uh, you know to meet the agricultural uh, requirements uh, water requirements. Um, in Jordan, for example. Uh, um, uh, I would say 95%, 95%, and this is uh, official number, of treated wastewater is being used for irrigation. Uh, and, uh, and we have, I would say, we have a well-structured system uh, for uh, wastewater reuse. I mean, we have standards, we have regulations, we have good governance, we have monitoring uh, and, and, and everything. And likewise, in Tunisia, for example, uh, and in North Africa, in Egypt, in Egypt, they have uh, just a couple couple of years ago, they launched the, the largest wastewater treatment uh, uh, plant in the world, uh, which is which is called uh, Bahr al Bakr, uh, and it is the largest uh, wastewater treatment plant in the world. And uh, to, hi to highlight this fact, that me in a country. Uh, I mean, a region they it, it, it, it, they have realized the importance of wastewater reuse uh, for agriculture. This is the first strategy. The second strategy, um, in fact, uh, we're we're trying to uh, integrate the new technologies uh, to minimize uh, the water that is used in irrigation. For example, uh, now uh, the shift into drip irrigation and micro irrigation. Uh, as as you know, is is uh, is being you know is getting uh, uh, accepted, is getting wide, uh, widely accepted in jo in Jordan and and in, in other MENA countries. Uh, so so uh, uh, this is uh, uh, uh, the, the second strategy. So the, the new technologies uh, uh, to minimize the water the water consumption. Uh, the uh, the the third one, 
uh, as uh, integrating some digital technologies. Uh, for example, nowadays uh, we have uh, we have in, in in many farms in in Jordan and in many countries there are lots of farms they uh, they equip they have equipped uh, like digital uh, platforms to control irrigation, uh, what we call it precision farming. Uh, so uh, so everything is controlled. So the the irrigation is uh, is uh, uh, you know uh, uh, the pump starts when uh, uh, the uh, the soil uh, gets uh, gets dry uh, automatically. So and it is this is linked with with the weather conditions. So uh, so and this is quite common now in Jordan and and in some MENA countries. So these are three strategies: wastewater reuse. Uh, drip irrigation and micro micro irrigation, and the third one is a new digital technologies. Okay, thank you, Dr. Asayed, uh, for sharing. Because actually, <laughs> I have experience also. I I was graduated from Saudi Arabia, and <clears throat> yeah, yeah, in the country like Saudi Arabia, also uh, they very strict with the regulations. Uh, they yeah. they use uh, was wastewater, uh, and they reuse it uh, for agriculture. Thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Asayed. Uh, now, for uh, Dr. Puji, could you elaborate uh, the question? Yeah, Pak Ahmad. Thank you for the question. So, based on the experience in Indonesia, also what we are carrying out in the research and innovation in, in the brain, it's also one of Part of the technology are developing by Ahmad. You may also add a, a complement of, of my answer. Yeah, it is actually this tropical country. So now this we so I also mentioned in the presentation that we have a fluctuative or anomaly of uh, climate with Ranina. Within Ranina, we have a lot of uh, flood, and in contrast to Alina, we have long uh, dry season. So on this so for water management, actually, first actually, what based on the task and the role of this uh, research organization, we focus first on the right itself, the material, the, the genetic material, how we develop, how we select the plan or uh, variety that is very efficient to be structure or it's very the other top level to structure. Also, do rotation. Some of our results do rotation depends on the residents. Also, we have a lot of marginal. So, for the rotation first, how we maximize the genetic uh, resource. So, it's the with the any uh, variety which are tolerant to drought or plastic, it can, can just uh, like, uh, be, be suitable for the requirement. Uh, the second one is uh, from the research, it is the irrigation system. So we say like drip irrigation, so it's more um, optimal and efficient to use water. Also, and I don't know, Ahmad also different kind of uh, mechanization with the water to what how to run the machine. So it's so all irrigation system with the technology on the based on the research, and next also. So the research also for government, they built a uh, dam, a lot of dam in Indonesia because mostly farmers uh, use uh, rainfall for, for the watering and especially for uh, lowland rice. So in Indonesia, we have 10 million uh, of that, uh, rice uh, land for pig feed. So also we focus on that. So here with the dam, but it's not this is still not enough. But we try to use the maximize the optimize the dam, the, the technology, how to the management. And the others, of course, how to do the water cost present technique here. We promote the so maybe it's a lot relevant to IS administrative uh role with the code mark stage of the show monitoring was present to listen. It's mostly on computation. So it's a lot of uh, explained by uh, Mr. Asayat. And the others, maybe, yeah, for monitoring and things so come, uh, so also we have to do this. is why right here we need collaboration and partnership yeah, with the uh, member of White Show and also the member of White Show. But at, I mean, 
the sum of this information or this integration is can be the mixture of both the components. Okay. Okay, thank you uh, very much, uh, Ibu Puji, who has uh, elaborating the questions. <clears throat> uh, I will give another chance for uh, the participant who want to uh, have uh, questions. Okay, well, okay, we have uh, questions from uh, Ibu Erliana Ginting <clears throat> to all speaker. Oh, it's already. <laughs> it's gone. The question is gone. <laughs> okay, well. <clears throat> uh, okay, I, I have a question for Irem uh, about uh, for for funding from the Horizon, Horizon uh, Europe. Uh, can, can can it be used for uh, uh to to fund the publication yes yes uh actually horizon europe is a uh, very strong on uh, open science and publication and uh yes for sure uh publications will be welcomed and uh, there is a let's say specific um uh, requirements to publish if it will not endanger uh, the exploitation of the, the results. So yes, definitely. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ayran. Oh, okay. We have a question from uh, Bu Buginteng, uh, who Mr. Budi already wrote, wrote for me. Uh, to all speakers, <clears throat> regarding the shortage of water uh, currently, and also in, of course, the future, <clears throat> Uh, does it mean that breeding and release uh, the early maturity varieties of crops, particularly uh, the kind of food crops, will be uh, also prioritized uh, in zero hunger program? Do you have experience in, in your country? First, I will give opportunity to uh, Dr. Asayed. What kind of crops do you prioritize in, in Jordan? Hello, Dr. Asayed. Excuse me, excuse me, I am here. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, can you can you can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, this is about the uh, water shortage. Yeah, water shortage because uh, yeah, water shortage is a problem. So, <clears throat> what kind of uh, crops do you uh, prioritize? Yeah. In good question. Yeah, good question. Uh, in fact, now. Uh, uh, in Jordan, they are uh, they are uh, pushing the farmers towards what we call it drought resistant crops, uh, and this is in fact a strategy to adapt to the climate change and to be like you know uh, uh, uh, to have like a resilient food systems. Uh, however, uh, uh, not all uh, of these uh, climate resist resistant crops are, uh, I would say. Is suitable for uh, for the condition for our conditions, uh, uh, but anyway, uh, uh, the government the government uh, they they as I mentioned they promote some uh, uh, crops that are not like water intensive. Uh, uh, so, for example, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, uh, vegetables, uh, we cultivate all kinds of vegetables in Jordan, but this is the depend on the water and the water uh, in the water storage i would say year by year for example if the year uh, in, during the wet years uh, where the rainfall is is okay and the, the the dams are full so the governments they allow for some crops that can consume water uh, for for example uh, for example tomato watermelons uh, cucumber and, and, and so on uh, in drought years, they put some restrictions on cultivating these uh, water-intensive uh, uh, crops. So it is a sort of management, in fact. So, but in generally speaking, we cultivate all kinds of crops. Uh, but it 
depends, as I mentioned, on, on the water situation uh, uh, for, for each year. Okay. okay. Thank okay. you, Dr. Asayed. Uh, now, uh, I will invite uh, Professor Julian. What kind of yeah uh, crops uh, do you prioritize uh, yeah. in, in Cameroon? Uh, the, the the crops are regionally distributed. In the center where I am, it's mainly uh, banana, uh, cassava, cocoa yam, like that. Is the that, these are the main crops here. Uh, in the west, it's mainly maize beans and uh, in the north many peanuts mm. sorghum millet yeah rice so it's, it's a little bit regionalized these are the main crop here yeah okay so is this depend on the location yeah yeah it depend on the location okay Okay, thank you, Professor Julian, uh, sharing with us. And now, uh, Dr. Puji. Thank you, Ahmad. I think similar to other speakers, so in Indonesia, yes, we have uh, the I mean, diverse and uh, also specific uh, environment in Indonesia due to the I mean, a lot of island of the has uh, isolated uh, environment due to, I mean, because of the C or, or either. So it, to this uh, matter, so what we would like to uh, do for the research or how to, for the shortage water is, yeah, in this first, how we do diversification of crop first, that one, not on the focus, because it decides the staple food is rice and mostly people eat rice. So how we do diversification of crop, not only rice. So I guess we can, just plant like tubers. There's a lot of local uh, resources in Israel, like sweet potato in Iran, in Papua, and others. Also, like cassava and also sorghum. So, it's just kind of many uh, crops that can, I mean, ad high, high adaptability to the drought on the, on the hot temperature or even marginal issue to the, to the water. So, the second one is. Uh, how we do not only mono cropping, multi crop, multiple, multiple crop, right? Yeah, multiple cropping. This is also one of the way how, how to manage the water. So it's polarized with others. And now this even in uh, Roa, which especially in uh, center for food crops, they, they make a kind of multiple crop rice with the uh, rubber and things. so this is so how, how we try to have this strategy. And if for example, with rice, because it's staple food, how we develop water efficient variety, even upland rice, or which can be grown in the less water lock condition. So this is also one of the uh, strategy how, how to uh, face this uh, uh, water management. So the importance is not only the crops, but also how the farming technique would combine with the, the important so to maximize the water efficiency. I think it's the, the additional Okay, okay thank, thank you so you. much, uh, Ibu Puji. We are saying, yeah, we have to uh, highlight crops and uh, farming techniques. Okay, thank you so much. <clears throat> uh, we have, well, I think this will be the last uh, questions from the participants. I will give uh, opportunity to uh, uh, Dr. Ahmad Suryadi. Thank you, Pak, uh, Pak Ahmad. Uh, uh, I'm, maybe my, my question is more technical collaboration, I think, rather than technical research. Uh, since we have uh, so many countries uh, presented uh, the uh, priority of collaboration in, in this uh, uh, webinar, so uh, I'm getting to more differ. So, so since uh, suppose I have an, uh, a proposal for the joint collaboration research, 
So what is the role of the white throw? So that's my proposal can be progressed. Uh, is it just for, you know, uh, dealing, for example, I'm going to uh, uh, co collaborate my proposal with the, with the Europe, uh, with Dr. Irena, or with Dr. Said. So how we can, we can, uh, we can, uh, uh, uh put it in and and progress it this this system maybe this is it need to understand and need to know for all the, for all all of us in order to you know uh, facilitate and make it easy to uh, join the collaboration thank you okay uh, thank you dr ahmad suryadi i think your question will be addressed by uh, miss iren could, could you elaborate um yes so uh what uh Waydraw does is uh, to bring um, different organizations from around the world together. Uh, so um, there are, uh, let's say, uh, ongoing uh, events. And also there is a platform uh, to share, uh, an online platform to share um, possible interests. OK, and then uh, this is a, a, a way to say, okay, I could bring this, okay? So um, as I explained, in terms of collaborating within European uh, uh, funded projects, Horizon Europe, right now it's not the best time because we don't know so much what opportunities are there. We will know uh, more in the coming months. But when there are uh, topics, um then it's possible uh to say for instance if you go uh, as i explained uh there are th these work programs that mm -hmm. when they are published you can look at them and see in which topics in which calls uh, they are asking for um uh, collaboration and then you can uh, think okay my organization could contribute with this as explained the type of role normally is that you think that you could bring something that is different or you see the need to replicate because sometimes it, it says international replication is encouraged or uh, you see that because of the kind of uh, research expected, it makes sense that they are going to be looking to different, uh, I, I don't know, uh, natural resources or whatever. So then uh, you can include uh, in this uh, digital platform of Waydraw uh, uh, uh, an offer saying, okay, I could bring this to a project and this will uh, reach uh, the the different members of Waydraw in, in a different uh, research or, uh, organizations in Europe and they will see it and they will take it into account if they are uh, building a consortium. So this would be uh, a way. I have to say I'm not uh, the, the person dealing with Waydro in my organization. So I, I receive this kind of uh, information, but through my colleagues, okay? okay. But they know that there is this, this uh, platform yes. Or during the meetings, uh, you can you can uh, also express the, this kind of interest, and eventually yeah. it reaches people like me who are putting together a consortium. And and I personally uh, have included international uh, partners. Uh, also, if I see the need for an international partner, I will ask my colleague who is dealing with Waydraw, and he will say, "Okay, I would put you in contact with." Uh, that organization or that other organization. So it's it's in the two directions, but it's good that you use the, the, the online platform and also that if you go to one of these online or in-person events, that you get to know uh, and you introduce yourself to uh, the people that are uh, the contact nodes for Europe or for other continents because they will remember and they will uh, put you together eventually when there are opportunities. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Iren, for responding uh, Mr. Ahmad Surya, the uh, questions. I think I have to uh, end these sessions. Uh, so as a conclusion for these sessions, uh, <clears throat> I think the, 
there are no other way to eradicate uh, hunger uh, all over the world, but we have to hold our hand together. Uh, as a researcher, of course, we have to propose and implement many innovative programs, uh, including maybe action research programs, to eradicate uh, hunger from each of our regions in all over the world. Uh, thank you uh, to all participants who has been joining uh, the two panel sessions I moderated. Lastly, uh, thank you again to all speakers who has delivering very excellent and impactful uh, presentations. Uh, I think my I, I will give my time to MC to run the next agenda. Uh, thank you again. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good afternoon. Thank you, Dr. Ahmad, for taking the lead in the previous two sections. Uh, we have a lots of uh, inputs and hopefully these inputs could be followed up and could be collaborated with in the future. Now we are about to have the third section and that in this third section will be introduced about Saira platform. Actually, this uh, term we have heard before in the very beginning by Dr. Paul always uh, say Saira platform and then one of the invited speakers uh, also say Saira. So Saira is uh, one of the platforms and who will be uh, presented by the founder of Saira or the director of White Row Office in Germany, Mr. Dominic Reynolds. So Mr. Dominic, are you with us today? Yes, hi. Good afternoon, everybody. Okay, good afternoon. So uh, Mr. Dominic, after the presentation, I will let you to lead the discussion or question and answer session. Sure. So uh, just directly uh, respond to the uh, participants if there is any response. Thank you. So you may start now. Uh, Paul, I saw your hand uh, a minute ago. You want to add something? I think that's enough. Go, go ahead, Dominic. No, you, you'll yes. cover it. Don't worry about it. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, thank you very much, um, Bryn and, and the host of the session for giving me the opportunity um, to speak about Sarah. And I was quite, um, I'm not surprised, but I was happy that um, Irene just mentioned Sarah, the way to platform um, that, that that that people can use in order to get connected to, to, to potential partners. Um, let me share my screen for a second. Can you see my presentation now? Yes, we can see that. Yes, yes, we can see. All right. Okay. Um, let me start my presentation with some notes on on some challenges that our researchers are facing worldwide, and that they can actually hinder and the ability to make contributions to their respective fields, but also to the SDGs, um, and to the achievement of the SDGs. Exploring these challenges, um, as well as corresponding strategies, provides insights into the motivation behind establishing a platform like Syra and how it effectively addresses some of the obstacles uh, that researchers are facing. I'm sorry that I that I joined the session quite late. Uh, I'm quite sure that you have been um, already, you know, talking about you know certain challenges and, and how to overcome them. Uh, so maybe it's a it's a bit of repetition here. Um, so many researchers struggle definitely with the uh, with inadequate funding, right? So this affects the ability to conduct research, to attend conferences, and to access technologies and up-to-date resources, right? So this is this is probably the one of the uh, most pressing challenges for for some researchers. But there's also the lack of collaboration opportunities, um, or infrastructure constraints, right? The access to <clears throat> to to equipment. Um, or the you know that, that research are uh, struggling with you know outdated labs or outdated equipment that, that can hinder research activities, opportunities for for training and and professional development be maybe limited for some researchers right affecting their ability to acquire new skills to stay competitive in their fields, um, limited access to journals and publications, language barriers and so on. So there are plenty of more challenges that um, that researchers are facing. I'd like to I'd like to focus now just on two in the context of my brief presentation on Syrah. I will concentrate on some two challenges and corresponding potential strategies here. So, for instance, in the case of limited funding, right, strategies might include uh, advocating for increased government funding, but also engaging in advocacy um, efforts to emphasize research, 
research global importance, right? Fostering collaboration with the private sector as well as um, technology transfer and commercialization might lead to um, um, new funding, right? Funding resources. And in the context of wage, another crucial strategy is international collaboration, right? Engaging in partnerships on a global scale with other organizations. For instance, we just talked about Horizon Europe. Uh, I just listened to Horizon Europe and, and projects, right? That participating in, in big projects can, can, can bring additional funding, right? And this is all aligning with wages core value of international um international collaboration. And then there is the second uh, challenge, the lack of collaboration opportunities, right? Um, solutions involve attending international conferences or workshops or establishing research networks, right? Which, for instance, Waitrose is doing with the SDG working groups, right? This might lead to new collaboration opportunities for, for its members or the implementation or the joining of, um, of research projects, um, another strategy to, um, to, to, to face the lack of collaboration opportunities, right? Exchange programs working is also, which was also working in that context, right? It might also create new collaboration opportunities for researchers. And last but not least, then the final strategy is leveraging digital platforms, right? Um, and Syra is one of the platforms out there that is actually supporting, trying to support um, researchers in, in identifying partners and, and trying to attract funding um, and tackle the challenge of, of lack of collaboration opportunities. So I would describe Syra as a digital matchmaking platform that connects researchers and other stakeholders to initiate collaborations. It's a platform to upload collaboration needs and project ideas, seeking potential partners to work with. The platform was developed by Fraunhofer, where I'm still working at. It was funding by one of our ministries, but it's operated by Waitro and it's it's, it's also important to mention that uh, you can use the platform being a Waitro member, but it's op also open to non-Waitro members and the use of the platform is, is, is free of charge. Now let's take a closer look at how the matching matchmaking process uh, works in a nutshell, right? So if we have user e A, user A is searching for partners, he's uploading something on the platform, then the user B is seeing it and expressing interest in collaborating with user A, and then user A can decide whether he's interested in, in collaborating with user B or not. And then they start a discussion about a potential collaboration. So this is how we create the matches on our system. So now let's explore the various applications for Syra, right? Because it can be employed in various contexts. You can utilize Syra to find partners if you are in need of an additional consortium partner, right? So we just talked about, you ask um, how waitress supporting uh, the building of consortia, right? We have seen that on a platform. I'll come to that in a minute. That um, European partners are looking for further partners um, when they want to apply for a call that is open for um, international partners. So we have seen that on a platform that, that European partners are using the system. Um, and um, But you can also use the platform if you have an innovative idea and you're seeking collaborations um, for its development. So SARA can be a valuable resource if you just have an innovative idea, but you're looking for complementary know-how. If you have developed a technology and you're looking for business partners, Sara could be a tool to find potential business partners. But uh, it also serves as a tool to find partners for various collaboration needs, so including access to infrastructure consultancy. So we have witnessed that on the system as well, that people were seeking consultancy and <laughs> sorry, they were able to find the right partners to work with. Allow me to present it in a different angle. So Sara facilitates connections between different organizations, right? So we have researchers working at research and technology organizations, RTOs. So they are looking for partners and they are collaborating with other RTOs on international research projects, for instance. We have RTOs um, connected with companies for doing some contract research. So companies are paying for the for the services provided by the RTO. So this is a match um, that is created by, by Syra. We have um, RTOs matching and partnering with other RTOs when it comes to consultancy. I already mentioned that, or the access to infrastructure. And um, RTOs collaborating with companies, so it could be startups, could be, could be SMEs, 
and the purpose of technology transfer and commercialization. So these are the different use cases um, that, that we have seen on Syrah and that, that you can use the platform. So and um, this perspective allows us now to link back to the previous mentioned challenges, right? And highlight how SARA is supporting researchers and how it can evaluate, be a valuable strategy to address some of the challenges, right? We have the lack of funding, um, private sector engagement is one of the strategies, right? Uh, SARA can create linkages to the private sector. Also, when it comes to technology transfer, SARA can be a valuable tool. And of course, international collaboration, that's the the heart, the core of Sina, right? Connecting partners beyond borders, um, um, along you know, different um, uh, between different continents. Lack of collaboration opportunities, joint research projects was one of the strategies, <laughs> and the infrastructures, access to infrastructure, um, was one of the strategies. So this is this is how Sina is capable of actually supporting strategies of RTOs to to solve the challenges that, that that researchers are facing. Now let's take a closer look of, <coughs> sorry, <clears throat> at who um, who is currently using Syrah and what is the actual user base. So we count currently on more than 450 different organizations from over 120 countries. So it's a, it's a, we have a really global reach right now. <clears throat> most of our, most of our members or our users actually from research organizations or from universities but we have seen also an increase in an, um, in the numbers of users from startups and NGO and that's quite interesting to observe and then if you look at the geographical aspect most of our members are actually from Africa um, but we have also strong and committed user base from Europe and Asia so um, it's really an, an interesting tool if you're seeking partners from different regions um, Sara is um is a, is the right tool and it has been proven to be a successful tool as well for many people. Um, however, it's important to note that there is no guarantee of a match, right? So if you upload something on Sara, it really depends on the quality of your upload. If you find a partner or not, whether you find a partner or not, and and and yeah, of course, I said there is no guarantee. So it was the first version that of the platform that we launched in January twenty nineteen. We had over thirty matches and at least 14 collaborations. I'm saying at least because uh, for us, sometimes it's challenging to track down all success cases because um, once they have matched on the platform, right, we offer the initial infrastructure to to to to make the connections. But then when it comes to the follow-up, um, we need to get better in, in this regard. So to do better follow-up, um, be closer to the project teams that were formed on the platform and to track the success cases. So we, that's... There's something that, that we can improve. And with the second version that we launched in August 2021, we had almost, um, I think, already 60 matches. Um, new matches for last, last week. There were two new matches. And at least 25 collaborations. And sometimes a match, um, you know, let's say today, doesn't mean that there will be a project tomorrow, right? Because there is just initial contact. And we have seen um, that Syrah made initial contacts uh, two or three years ago, but um, they... Got to know potential new partners and at some point for their project idea they acquired the funding and then they were able to turn that idea into a project right so that's why that did um, we have to be, be a bit careful with the numbers but that's what i said at least 25 projects because this is this is what we have witnessed right matches that came out from siren they got um project funding um let me show you some of these success cases um this is, uh, this is one of the success cases, including some of the uh, participants here of this session um, from Bryn, from Tista. It was actually they decided the matchmaking on Syrah, um, but Waitro provided some seed funding and we also provided some trainings for the project teams and we also organized a pitch event. So um, Waitro and Syrah, they are somewhat interconnected, right? As I said, Waitro is um, operating the system and uh, offering support measures for project teams that were matched on the system. There's another project consortium, um, another another example. Um, partners were in this consortium. Not all of them were matched on the platform, but some of them were. So it was a case where Later was looking for further partners and there were responses from two waiter members on the system and then they became a partner in the project and they're still working together. I think I saw Professor Julian in this call um, 
she um, she benefited from from being a Syra user. So Syra was the matchmaking. This is another project from Fraunhofer in Germany and an institute in Kenya and the two other organizations. And um, it was actually a part of the pilot program of Syra. So it was it was not the digital part, but it was the the pilot. But it's an, quite an interesting thing because we we. We matched the, the front of Institute with the Wage Remember in Kenya, and then we supported them along the way. And the match took place in 2016. And I think three or four years later, they got, finally got the funding to do the project. And and now they are working, um, or I think now they already implemented the project in Kenya. And this is also an example from the from Cyber Vision 1. It was um, Serum in Malaysia. They had acquired funding from um, uh, a Malaysian program. And they were looking for partners, um, and they used the Sarah system to connect with, with partners in the region. And um, I think they hosted a couple of workshops and trainings um, in the region. The direct Sarah's role was the, the matchmaking. And last but not least, another project quite interesting as well. Um, it was a consultancy done by um, by a Danish institute, but the request came from a Colombian institute, and they provided the funding actually. So. They said that they need support in in um, in developing a strategy for global cooperation within the organization, and they put this uh, request on the platform, and then this institute from Denmark responded, and they started working together, and the Colombians actually paid for the service. So, so this this demonstrates more or less the different use cases that we've witnessed on the platform. So let's dive deeper a little bit into the process. Two important terms, um, opportunity and proposal. Opportunity are the partner searches. Um, proposals are the reaction to uploaded opportunities. And it's important to mention, so this is a crucial message here, that every Syria user has two options. So you can do both. So when you register for free on the platform, you can do both. You can either search for partners or screen the uploaded ones and see whether you are fit, and then you can respond to them. So and I would recommend to consider both options. Um, when you create the opportunity, option one, what you do is you just fill out the form online, you, you provide an overview, you write an abstract, you say, okay, this project is related to the SDGs. You decide whether it's an innovative idea that you have, the way you're seeking um, complementary know-how, or you say, um, I wanna apply for a certain call that you have identified and here's what you're planning to do and here's the partners that you're lacking. So this information um, is you have to type in in this in this online form, and then before you submit it, you can also um, work on the visibility, right? Because you can say, okay, um, this is only targeted to um, further Asian partners, so I only want the Asian users um, or the users that are based in Asia to see that opportunity. So you can limit your the visibility. Um, and in, in, my, in some cases it might make actually sense because you don't want, you know, potential competitors to see it or, or et cetera. So at the end, before you upload your opportunity, you can, you can limit the visibility of, of, of your, of your partner search. And other people then can, you know, read it. They should read it carefully. So if you, if you're planning to, re, to, to, to respond to an, to an uploaded opportunity, I recommend you to read it carefully and ever evaluate if you're really suitable, if you're a suitable cannibal, if you're in line with the expectations from the potential partner. And then you click on submit proposals and you provide an overview. You describe in details what your idea is, how you could contribute to that, um, to the project that, that the other person is proposing. You can add team members, you can add documents, and then you submit the proposal and then you have to wait uh, and see whether this... Um, user A is, who submitted the opportunities is really interested in working with you or not. And then we have the match, right? If if it's affirmative, if the person is agreeing to, um, if he accepts the, the, the, the proposal, the expression of interest, <laughs> sorry, then you both receive a notification via email, you get the email address from potential partners, and then you, you know, schedule a Teams meeting or a Zoom call and then you start discussing um, and define the terms of potential collaboration directly with your partner. So that's um, that's not our direct business right now anymore. Um, so it's totally up to you um, what you do with the contact details and, and um, if you want to uh, submit a proposal together or not. To wrap it up, 
Um, Sarah is all about matchmaking and finding partners. Uh, you can always choose between option one and two, right? Option one, you can create your own partner search, your own opportunity. Uh, option two, you can react to uploaded opportunities. Sarah is free of charge. You can access it as a way to remember, but you can access it also if you're not affiliated to, to any organization that is a member of Waitro. But it's important to note that Sarah is not a platform yet for securing funding. So um, if you consider using the platform, please do me a favor and do not upload a, a, an idea and say, I'm looking now for funding. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, most of our users are researchers and they are also lacking funding most of the time, right? So they... But what they have, they have complementary know-how, right, or that you might need. So when you upload something on Sarah, do not simply describe your technology and say, I'm looking for funding. You know, please take your time and write what are your collaboration needs. So where do you need expertise? Where are you lacking expertise? Or this is a technology that you want to commercialize. So this is the partners that I'm looking for or to develop a prototype or to, to to start production. So these type of things, but don't simply say, this is my research proposal, I'm looking for funding. So this is my, this will be my recommendation because um, as I said, that's not the right platform <clears throat> to attract funding. So yeah, that's in a nutshell, um, Saira, the, the matchmaking platform. Um, <clears throat> if you have any questions right now, please feel free to ask. Um, you could also drop me an email and, um, what I've also done is a couple of trainings and, you know, dive a little bit deeper into the process and, you know, do's and don'ts when you upload an opportunity, um, you know, to increase the success rate. Um, we can also go jointly through the system when you need support, right? We also provide templates when you're planning to search for partners. We have a word template where you can insert or we can start drafting your partner search and then just copy paste uh, once you're ready. So, um, from the Secretariat, we offer a couple of support services um, for, for the use of Syrah. So, um, or if you have any doubts, right? Yeah, please feel free to contact me, and, and I'm happy to discuss uh, to discuss them with you. All right. All right. Thank you for the presentation, Mr. Dominic. So I'll invite all the uh, participants, maybe to ask uh, one or two questions or giving comments to the presentations or maybe sharing using Sara platform and tell us how this platform works. Uh, you can raise your hands or uh, via chat box, just give some uh, messages there. All right. Uh, we have Dr. Paul. Please, Dr. Paul. All right, buttons pressed. You hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right. Well, Dominic gave a great introduction to Sarah, but I was actually going to respond before, just add to it a little bit. I think it was Dr. Ahmed that asked the question of what Waitro was going to do in connection with SDG2. And I just wanted to make the, the comment that generally the people who get the most value out of Waitro are the ones that invest into it, not in terms of money, but in terms of their time and their commitment. So I wanted to encourage everybody. I, SARA, for example, is a great way to form the roots of a collaboration. It can bring partnerships together, but you still have to develop those partnerships to actually make a research proposal work. And there are many other platforms on Waitro by which you can do that. For example, we have a very nicely designed website. It's also designed by the Germany office team in Fraunhofer. There is a platform on that website called SDG Impact. And there we will publish and promote key partnerships that have been developed by members to advance one or more of the SDGs. We can actually promote your research. So as, um, as was said in the Horizon presentation, now is not a good time to actually be putting proposals together because there are no calls out, but now is a very good time to be developing your brand 
and making sure that the Waitro network understands what you do and what is your capacity, what tools do you have at your disposal, and what are your interests. So put an article on uh, the SDG impact site of Waitro. Um, give us some comments on LinkedIn or other social media platforms. We will help you promote and represent your personal research brand around the Waitro network. And that can pay dividends when it does come to the time for a proposal because the rest of the network will know you and know what you're capable of and you develop a personal relationship. It goes all the way to this meeting itself, right? Um, this, this online webinar, Waitro itself would never have organized this webinar. It was in fact led by the Bryn team, in particular Teresia, as the regional representative for Asia Pacific. And once she had the idea of wanting to organize it and, and lead the SDG group, then the Waitro Secretariat partnered with her and used our, com our um, communications network to help bring as many people in as we can. So it's all about partnership and it, it's all about how you contribute to the Waitro network. We tend at these meetings, a lot of the times we see the same people showing up to every meeting. That's not bad in itself. We welcome those people and we like to have our Waitro regulars. But I often say that if you go around Waitro member organizations, and remember that Waitro is an association of organizations, if you go to those organizations and stop people in the corridor and ask them, I will almost guarantee you that 95% of those people don't know that they're actually members of Waitro. So for all the people here that are member organizations of Waitro, please spread the word amongst your colleagues and bring them in. It's a very inclusive organization. Bring them in, uh, help them represent their research. And for those of you here that are not members of Waitro organizations, why not? That's all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thank you for the comment, uh, Dr. Paul. So actually we have two um, messages here in the chat box. So the first one is Ahmad Suryadi. Uh, he said, thank you for the information of Sarah, this good tool. If possible to tell us how do we use it? Yeah, actually, um, Mr. Dominic has already told us maybe uh, you can tell us how the first thing that we need to do to use this uh, platform, if maybe there is a registration or, yes. or we have to register ourselves with uh, email or something else. Yeah, please. So there is, um, let me share my screen again. I'll just, um, just share the, the screen, right? So the domain is sara.eco. Um, you can register here on the right side. So it's, um, it's quite easy. You you sign up, right? You, uh, your email address, you give a name, you accept the terms of use, privacy policy, and that's that's that's that's common, right? And once you have um, created your account, you can log into your account. It's quite interesting to see. So, um, as I mentioned before, um, not all of us will have the same opportunity. Um, you know, in in our news, in our opportunity feed, because some are restricted to certain areas. As I mentioned, you can you can limit the visibility, right? So some people might you know have here even more results. So these are the the, the latest one that we have here online. So um, it, it's it's actually it's I think from my point of view, it's quite easy to navigate because there are not a lot of features, right? <clears throat> you can create a new opportunity on the top. Here is the header navigation, right? Um, you log in. You can obviously first, you know, you know, edit your personal profile, right? You need to say where you're from, which organization, which type of organization. So I have a profile, my uh, Waitro member. So I have a Waitro profile. So at the front of the profile, I'm you know, working at Waitro, so at the Waitro Secretariat. So, you, but you can, you know, edit your profile and then you can create an um, an opportunity, right? So an opportunity is, is your own partner search, right? You give it a title, the abstract, you say it's really to agriculture, you select a, a cover picture, you write a little abstract, you say, okay, my project is really to SDG2, but also to SDG1. Um, then you can decide whether, you know, you want to give it a deadline. So because, for instance, you're, we want to apply for a call 
and then um, there's a deadline, right? So you can put in the deadline here as well. Um, but you can also leave it open because it's just an innovative idea that you're having and you know constantly looking for complementary know-how. You describe it here. You can describe it in detail. You can say, okay, this this is focusing on on just on Indonesia, or this is also focusing on on another country. So where you plan to implement it, you describe your potential partner, right? You can say, I'm looking for, I'm looking for um, a research organization, a research institute, but a, a university would also be a good partner. This has to be from. Um, from a certain region, could be from Eastern Asia, could be from Latin America, could be, you know, you name it. So, but, but you know, you can also say, yeah, I don't care. It could be uh, part from China, could be also part from Germany, but it could be also from Colombia. Um, you describe your partner's contribution. You can add team members, okay? You can say, look, um, a colleague of mine is already on the system. So what I, what I do, I just add him here because it will allow him also to see or her to see the responses that we get. Um, then you add documents, you can, you know, add a PDF document, a short presentation, and then you finalize it. And then you, you just, as I said before, you know, who should see this opportunity, all locked in users, or, you know, only the, the, the, the ones that you mentioned. Right? So only research organizations, institutes or universities <coughs> should see it. So this is how you can limit the visibility. And then that's the way it is. So then, then you have also chat, right? You can communicate with other users via the yeah. chat. Um, you have an overview of the different users. Not all of the users have actually public, um, public uh, profiles. So some people, so the numbers that I have that I've shown in the presentation are higher, since we have also some people using the platform, but they don't have a. Uh, a public profile. So that's a bit that's a bit slow my my my bandwidth today. I'm I'm really sorry. Um so and then you can you can manage the the proposals here, right? Incoming proposals means that somebody you know responded to an opportunity that I uploaded, right? So this is people are submitting me proposals, expressions of interest. But I, as I said, I can also you know go out and respond to opportunities and this is then managed in in in outgoing proposals. So when I'm I want to be part of of this project here, for instance, from Professor Eugenia from Mexico. From Mexico, she um she's she's looking for partners here, and if I'm interested in submitting a proposal, I submit a proposal. I describe the details, add team members. It's from my point of view, it's not it's not that that complicated, but um, but I'm I'm used to use online platform so it's it really depends on on also the capability of and, and the experience of people navigating through different platforms right um so but yeah, this is this is in a nutshell how you how you use the platform but right, as, I, as I said we can also schedule a one-on-one -on -one. so if you have further questions if you have any doubts um please write and drop me an email and i'm happy to schedule a call with you um to discuss the details all right, thank you so much. So it's like uh, uh, registering in the general uh, platform here, yeah? like uh, inserting our um, email or something like that, and then we got the conference confirmation, right? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. It, it should work. Sometimes if there is a bug, just drop me an email. Uh, if it's not working for you, sometimes the registration email goes to spam folder. <laughs> Unfortunately, so that happens as well. So, um, but you should be able to register. Okay. On the system. So yes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Dominic. So actually, we have uh, one question from Ibu Pujilestari from Brin. Please, yeah. Ibu Pujilestari, if you have the question. Yeah, thank you, uh, Ms. Alvis. I thank you to me for the excellent presentation. And actually, you already explained in detail. So I would like to make sure. So first is, is this Sayara platform open all years so we can any we can access any time for this opportunity first the second one so far you have the experience because you know well about the the platform uh, is there any recipe <laughs> or trick how is it resemble we are new newcomer for, for to get the, the i mean to get the where we are connected and then also how to get match so how is yeah, to get the, the strategy to, to this uh, find and match with the Sayara platform. 
also in the third one, is there any specific criteria for the research organization and other organization to apply on this opportunity, especially for joint research collaboration? Thank you. Thank you, Pupuji. Please, Mr. Dominic. So there were three or four questions, right? <laughs> Sorry. So the first question was, um, if it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's online, it's available 24 seven. So you can upload it from Monday to Sunday. Um, so it's, it's free of charge. <laughs> I recommend you to use your work address, right? Because then we can attach it to your organization. Uh, we have certain organizations registered as Waitro members. So then they get the tag that are Waitro members on the system as well. So if you use your Brin email address, you might get the logo Waitro, member of Waitro to your profile. But uh, you can also be also people using the private email addresses and then create the profile. But um, yeah, so it's it's accessible for Waitro members, but also non-Waitro members. Um, twenty four seven, so that's that's that's important to mention. Just let me share my screen again. So as I said, um, for instance, uh, this institute from from Mexico is a member of Waitro, so you can see that you know at her profile that she is a Waitro member. Um, okay. The second question was if there is any strategy, right, on how to use the platform successfully. Is that correct? Was that the question? Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So, I I in the training what I what I what I did in the training um a couple of weeks ago I um I made a couple of screenshots and comparing you know opportunities that were uploaded with a with a good quality with good content and they were successful and then I uploaded some um just stating that um. So I have the idea to turn to to to do something and just a really rough description, one or two sentences that might not be enough to attract potential partners. Right. Because put you into the shoes of a potential collaborator. Right. What they want to see is, you know, they want to know exactly what you're planning. Right. And also, if you are on the other side, right, you're reading it. What is that you want to know from your potential partner who is looking for partners? He's, you want to know, you know, what is. Uh, what is his plan? Is he applying for a call? Is there a grant also already available for this project? And in, this just seeking complementary know-how. So it, it really depends on, on, on what you're looking for. And I really recommend you to, to not just post two or three sentences because that might not attract a lot of people responding because, um, you know, they think it, it might be not a serious request for partners or it's just, you know, um, take it serious. So it's not, it doesn't have to be a, you know, a thesis, a, a 200 documents, you know, no, of course not. Just a rough description about what you're looking for, what you're planning to do, um, that might be enough. And not just focus on, I'm looking for funding. So this will be my my my recommendation on the strategy. Um, but, but, but, but we can do that in a, in a 101 as well. You can also, you know, send me a draft and we can go through it together before you upload it in order to get the best information out to increase the chances that you find a partner. So I've seen, I've seen, especially people from Fraunhofer and, and from Europe responding to opportunities, also to, to latest opportunities. So um, so if you, as I said, there's no guarantee, but there is a, I would say high probability that if you get something out in a good quality, stating exactly what you're planning to do and what you're looking for, I'm pretty sure that you will find that you will get responses. If it's if it's the right partner, I don't know. You have to discuss because it depends on various um, factors, right? But um, I'm I'm quite confident that if the if the content that you upload is good, that we will find a good partner. And the third question was, can you repeat that again? Sorry. Is there any specific criteria of the organization which will apply on this platform, especially for the a kind of Yes, yes, join. You uh, mean apply? Yeah, I'm not apply. I mean, on this, this platform. So let's mention if in any organization. So is there any priority or any is a prerequisite of the organization that can apply? I'm mean, not apply. I mean, yeah, just the opportunity is platform. Yeah. Um. Well, it has to be. So the only requirement has to be something to with regard to a research and innovation, right? So this is, okay. um, this is, so mm -hmm. if you're looking for a a designer to set up a, you know, to, so then to, to set up your living room. So then it's, it's not the right platform to find a partner, right? So it has to be related to research and innovation. 
and the content of the platform. Regarding the type of organization, as I mentioned earlier in the presentation, I'm pretty sure that the organizer of the session will share the presentation afterwards. So most of our, our users are researchers and from research organizations or from universities. So, um, and most of the time they are using the system. So within the research communities, it's, it's, it's, it's well known. But I also encourage um, companies to use the platform. And this is what we're trying to do next year to improve the system a bit more, to attract more uh, users from the private sector because we need them on the platform, right? So I'm having long discussions with Paul, uh, what we can do and how we can improve um, the system in order to make it more attractive to for, for private sector stakeholders as well. So we have seen them on the platform. We've also seen matches, um, researchers with private sector stakeholders, with companies. But um, right now it's, it's, it's, it's more focusing on on the researcher side. I hope that answers more or less the questions. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. Please, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the perfect yeah. explanation. Terima kasih, Mas Alvis. Yeah, you're welcome, Bupuji. And thank you for the explanation, Mr. Dominic Reynolds. And I think we have one more question, probably. If there is any question or a comment, or I think I will uh, read some comments in chat box. We have um, from Pim Prapai Supondrat. Uh, he said, thank you, Dominic and Waitro team. Saira is a very good platform. The more users, the more opportunities and fruitful success to come. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mr. Pim Prapai. And then we also uh, have a comment from Ibu Teresia. Uh, maybe we can set up the technical training for accessing Sarah especially for brain researcher and other organizations who need it. Couldn't agree more, Yabu Teresia. <laughs> okay. So any more questions or comments from the participants? Maybe for the researchers, it is a very, um, very perfect tool because this tool is, this tool is very, uh, effective. Uh, we can find partners from around the world, right? Because the the limit is sometimes is a uh, distance. So we just click, we just match, uh, like what Mr. Dominic said. We match the. I mean, the platform uh, has a um, what is it? Uh, it's used to match make the uh, the same keywords, the keywords that we are trying to find. And then we uh, discuss with the potential partners and then we uh, agree to each other and then uh, undergo the uh, project that we're going to do. I think that's uh, so simple, right? Yeah. So any more questions? Uh, I think that's enough, yeah? Okay, so uh, we're going, thank you for the uh, Mr. Dominic Reynolds for the, um, uh, what is it, enlightened uh, presentation about Sarah. So that's very fruitful presentation. Okay. So uh, uh, an immense and massive gratitude and appreciation uh, is expressed to the admirable participants and speakers who have prepared the presentations, shared ideas, and uh, solutions related to our topic today and as well as the other participants and the moderator, Mr. Ahmad, who has led the discussion and question and answer session. So distinguished participants, before reaching at the end of our meeting, I'll invite the director of uh, utilization of research and innovation by industries, Brin, Dr. Mulyadi Sinung Harjono, to deliver a closing remark. To Dr. Sinung, you may have the time. Thank you, Mas Alvis. First of all, I as a personal native of Deputy Chairman for Utilization of Research and Innovation, we want to thank you for you for all speakers and participants of this webinars. There was a uh, 86 participants, and now we have around 50 or 46 uh, participants. This is a very good for four hours uh, webinars. So, as a closing remark, so we 
I want to say that Bin is ready to support SDG2 by offering the joint collaboration program. And Bin is invited also the wider wider member and non member to propose a short proposal collaboration that will be covered by research mobility and funding schemes. Here we have also the Marmara Research Center that open the research collaboration also in the topics of some of halal food and the identification also. We have also the research publication in the in terms of zero hunger in areas of white row by um, in already presented using bibliometrics methods and scientific publication in some countries and research collaboration also. Some uh, remarks what we have uh, notes here is the ancient the capacity of white row members to raise research funding from national and international sources. Encourage sharing of research infrastructures among RTO from Professor Mufex. Uh, Dr. Asset said also about the addressing challenges to zero hunger using uh, vertical farming, urban agriculture, intensive farming, climate, smart agriculture, sustainable management, and many questions about the smart irrigation. The others. Um, our chairman for research organization for agriculture and food has spoken about this future perspective for collaboration and some collaboration topics, some about the genetic improvement for increased productivity and quality, research potential in marine food products, agroeconomy research for sustainable crop, crop production and environmental friendly, and some smart farming techniques. The others about the scheme for international collaboration within Horizon Europe, how, how to access and with the, some topics, this as, uh, some topics, for example, about the assessment of soil health by Ms. Erin Padros. And the last is from Mr. Reines about, has said about the CERA platform, how to find partner, a research topic, and also funding using the CERA platform. So close, closely we hope that this webinar opened the opportunities of a wider research collaboration between white row members and non-members for fostering the research between us and with also the aims to, to have a zero harm. So again, on behalf of Green, uh, thank you very much for all your participation and see you again soon. Thank you very much. Thank you to Dr. Sinu, who shows full enthusiasm to support white SDG2 in reaching out potential partners, either the private sector or the international community, and exchange information about uh, joint research. Finally, we have arrived at the end of the webinar event. We are really thankful and we appreciate your presence from the beginning till the end and your attention as well while joining this meeting. Uh, hopefully, this work group webinar of White Through SDG2 will always remind us about our true commitment and effort to figure out more innovations and inventions to all that all parties could be involved in in order to stabilize the agriculture ecosystem, prevent starvation, and maintaining food supply. At this moment, we will end uh, the meeting, and we regret for any inconvenience when we conduct the event. We'll see you again in the future White Row webinar. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. All the friends. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you all for participating.